If anybody remembers the intellectual Dollar Tree from a couple weeks ago, we covered this guy named Jamie Mustard. He was uh, t- mostly talked about tigers and um, also about these weird shots uh, that people uh, can, uh, can get. So we kind of thought that maybe we had seen uh, the end of him, at least for this show, because... Um, just because, like, maybe we thought we'd seen the end of him. And we, wa- we tried to watch some of his other shit, and um, it didn't didn't go so well. Like, it just wasn't that interesting to watch. But um, no worries. Uh, he went on the fucking Oh No Nora show. Oh No Nora is one of the fucking anti-Scientology perverts that we've been talking about for a while now. And um, here's, here's him on the Oh No Nora show, apparently. Oops. Also, she has this atrocious fucking AI generated song that she plays at the beginning of her show. Everyone's wired. Oh no, no, what you inspire. No hot dog holding people's feet to the fire. Spilling out the truth, never feeling tired. Nor brings out the truth, never feeling tired. Oh no, no, what you inspire. Oh no, no, you make it sing. Facts and laughter, you always bring straight to the point, no messing around. Shining bright, brighten up the dark like a city light, leading us through with your honest mind. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> this song is such hot garbage. Never slow down, spreading all the joy all over town. Oh, no, hot dog turning our frown into a smile. Oh, no, what? no, no, you make a sing, sex and laughter. You always bring straight to the point, no messing around. Uh, the song's over. Are you? Oh, the song's not over. Oh, it is over. We are live again from the gay garage. She like literally stole that from this show called Rick and Steve. First of all, guys, sorry for the late start. I had to go pick my kid up take him to another place and get home. My wife handed me a burger. I ate it. In addition, my wife also, my wife, Jen, my beautiful, gorgeous, amazing wife. This is my last bite here. She you opened the show with food in your mouth. Like this stuff, <clears throat> this is like getting this stuff. I, I, I don't, I won't do any of this stuff. If I'm running late, I'm like, oh, I had errands to run. Banana bread, oatmeal, chocolate chip cookie. Healthy living. What? Healthy living. It's a healthy living recipe. <laughs> it's basically a salad. There's, it's basically a salad with butter. <laughs> and I am here to tell you I could live off these for the rest of my life. Um, yeah. So um, if I can convince my wife, maybe we'll get the recipe. So you, trust me, there's a payoff here. If, if you also know about Jamie Mustard, the guy's, uh, guy's weird. Because that shit, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't eat on stream. It'll be, it'll be on Instagram, my wife says. It'll be on Instagram later. All right. I need to put that over there so I can get to that. Oh, my goodness, guys. I do have a mystery guest coming. Uh, yes, we're getting calls, for, babe, calls for the recipe. So we will, we will be posting that. All right. Uh, I have sent the link to my guest. Okay. And um, I need to... F- uh, brown butter kind of makes everything better, I'm pretty sure. Um, oh, green butter makes everything better. Yeah. Yeah, she did talk, spend a half hour talking about getting groceries. I'm just texting my guest here. 
<laughs> Wait, so check this out. All this right. is a little bit weird, right? If you're running behind, then that's fine. You just wait to go live until your guest is connected. Oh my God, that cookie is good. <laughs> Power lies to paralyze. If I had a wife that baked like that, I'd still be married. Guys, we both make each other like delicious things all the time. And I do. Purple Groovy. Um, yeah, like but this is the pro that like this is like one of the advantages, right? Like if um, if I do, if I'm like, oh, we're gonna have an interview in the first segment, and my interview guest is running late, I just play an extra five, six, ten minutes of fucking local tunes. It's not, you know, fucking. It's a little boring waiting, but at least you get to hear like the roughies and shit, right? That's very true. I do have the best wife ever. I will. Yes, yes, yes. Um, John Samwowski, yeah. If you're heading down the Ozempic train, fantastic. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, they're going to be doing this, too. I don't know if people know about Ozempic. Oh, shit. Hold on. I got to I gotta switch things here. I got to gotta, gotta put this into red light mode. Everything's broken. Everything's broken. Uh, but Ozempic is a, a diabetes drug that is prescribed in some cases for people who are uh, have, have struggled uh, a lot with their weight but now a lot of people are using it to lose like 20 and 30 pounds it's becoming almost like a designer drug among um particularly like podcasters and uh, tech bro influencer types and it's really fucked up actually for people with diabetes 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 no but it's fucked up for people who need it because the price of it is going up very it's going up and it shouldn't be like this uh Catherine, am i still resting on my laurels I don't know. <laughs> what? Browned butter and mazithra cheese on spaghetti? Okay, now now we're just getting into food porn here. We're just getting into food porn. What is brown butter? So you you melt butter. It's oh. cooked. You it you cook it so that it, you're not quite you're not burning it. You're you're browning it like you would brown anything pan and you keep stirring fold in the cheese david you keep stirring until the butter goes from that beautiful yellow to a golden brown color and in that process it becomes even yeah it browns the milk you, like you can't do it with uh, like Delicious. ghee butter you can't make brown butter with ghee because the ghee butter is like so clarified I recommend uh you know fold in the cheese doing that Okay, another call for brown butter and mazithra cheese. Okay, I have never had this on anything. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Uh, listen, Dutch is saying it. Every woman needs a wife. Uh, that's just facts, whether you're gay or not. This is just uh, facts. Just facts. Really? I have never heard of this recipe. The best. Like every, ever. you know what's crazy is every, every fucking Sunday, no matter what, uh, like, as soon as I turn on the, as soon as I switch the lights to red, like the viewer count starts going up. I think people like see the white lights and they're like, God, I can't fucking possibly sit through that. It's an out. Correct, Kraken. Or um, maybe it's just, I just look like more of a, more of a hot snack under the red lights. gluten free. So there you go. Mountaintops. It's for you. Okay. Now this is very German. Browned butter on spatzel. Dankeschön. Dankeschön for that. Are you guys, is it glitching for you? Pepperoni nips? That sounds like a personal problem, but your dog is an, uh, adorbs. Um, <laughs> baked beans and tab. Like drinking a tab. Jesus, I haven't seen a tab since my mom was on her. The own. green, we've tried. So it's funny. We learned, I, I, didn't, I didn't know this much. Like green is actually a really hard color to light up a room with and get a camera to capture. My mom drank that shit all the time. You know, I know mizithra cheese is Greek. I'm, I'm aware. You bake it. You can fry it. It's like fucking magic. No, no, I know. But I've just never had it on a pasta with brown butter. Yeah. It sounds like a pretty simple dish, actually. <laughs> I might make that. Leandra, uh, you don't have a wife, but you have four cats. And all I ever get from them is resting on the laurels of being cute. <laughs> he has a stream deck. Where did my thing go? There we go. Oh, get out of here. Hello, Sandy McKenna. 
What up, Hilda Beast? Adorable, amazing friend from Sins of Scientology. Please, 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 please go watch and follow Sins of Scientology. And uh, they're amazing. And Sandy's amazing. Okay, so this is a core uh, old spaghetti factory spaghetti. I've never had that. I always, guys, I'm super boring. Like when I go to get certain dishes, like for example, spaghetti, I want a, I, I want you to dazzle me with a marinara. I want to be dazzled. If I go to a new pizza joint, I just get cheese. I am judging. Like, yo, like I have a secret to tell you. A lot of Italian places, they, they use that. They buy the spaghetti sauce. Oh. On your cheese to sauce to crust ratio. And it's got to be, or I'm not coming back. I don't, it, it, all the other things is just added. Just add it. Oh my goodness. Please hold the mystery guest is joining. This is the first time I've ever had a guest on my show from this particular software. I am so excited. What software? You guys, you know him. You love She ain't him. using Video Ninja. He's my brother from another mother. He's an author. That's right. The author of this book, The Invisible Machine. It's the one, the only, Mr. Jamie Mustard. And here he comes right now. What up, Lil' Cam? Hey. Like, literally longtime viewers of this show are like, that's just evil Juan. To the Ooh, garage. Hey. Wow, glad to be here. <laughs> All right, let's play a game. I have a question for you. You have to okay. fill in the mystery word. You okay. Fill in the mystery word. You ready for this? Yes. Okay, this is a tough one, but it's, is it tigers? I'm gonna see if you can fill in the mystery word. Okay. So this is so I'm gonna say a phrase and then you have to fill in the last word. Okay. Okay, so, so this is from the second gens, the second gems uh -huh. to Mitch Bris to Mitch Brisker. Okay, based on his own Um, Mitch, you may not be my daddy, but you are my blank. Oh, uh, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's too mean. Uh, <laughs> was that the right one? Did I choose correctly? <laughs> I don't know what it is. I can't say what it is. There's no wrong or right answers. That's what you chose and we'll accept it. So we what did we say? Let's do it one more time daddy but you are my bitch <laughs> all right <laughs> this is getting off to a great start okay. so right. is it tiger we're gonna, we're gonna talk about the book i'm gonna get the link in the chat here um for this one i did post it on my insta i gotta find it it's in a it's in a full oh it's have... okay it's okay no 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 we're gonna get it up there but jamie let's talk about it you saw did you see my last stream here about um I did. You know, I, I who, your, the guy. Your opus. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I did. The guy. And yeah. uh, so, you know, he's not the only one who is now, it, it, guys, for those of you who can't read. Um, so Jamie wrote this book with. Oh, look at that. He's got fancy letters, too. M.D. M.D. <laughs> Eugene Lipoff. He's a doctor. Medicine. Medical doctor. OK, so he's an anesthesiologist, which, by the way, is a perfectly fine thing to be. Tell us about. Oh, you got here just in time, or just maybe not, Miss J. What's up? It's the, he's a. He's a <laughs> Tell us about you, Gene. On, his work has been featured on 60 Minutes, uh, CBS This Morning, um, from Wired Magazine. His work's been endorsed by President Barack Obama. Ooh, these are these are all claims that we're going to do a pretty pretty thorough fact checking on for um, some some name. some reason. Uh, Mum's the word. Mum's the word. Uh, you've been used by special forces and the military for 20 years, almost since its inception. Mm -hmm. um, the Navy has studied it um, extensively. There are they, no, no, there's one study, just one study funded by the military. He's one of the only yeah, his name was Eugene Lipoff ever to be published in Lancet. Um, Lancet. It was, That's the Lancet. You know, this this uh, innovation was good enough for Dakota Meyer, who won the Congressional Medal of Honor as a right. Navy SEAL. Um, and I could just go on and on like that for, you know, I mean, I got, you know, helped get this treatment for um, a guy named Tom Satterley, who not only survived Black Hawk Down, but led the mission that captured Saddam Hussein. So 
this just is a, just a tiny person in the world of life. Uh, so none of this is suggesting to us that there are uh high high quality randomized controlled uh randomized controlled studies or experiments none of this is suggesting that there's been uh, proper peer review and replication of any of the studies this is just all like anecdotes about people that you're supposed to First of all, you're supposed to just take this at face value, but also these are people that you're supposed to like because fucking you're supposed to like them, I guess. Establishments who might have some trauma from being in the military. Just a yeah, tiny yeah, bit. maybe just yeah. a tiny bit, right? So, yeah. So, you know, again, I don't want to. I don't like to kind of go after people directly. You know, even the situation which came up in November, which was right after I was interviewed, which was horrifying for me to come out and finally do anything public. I was going to die with my story, as I've said. And when I say that, wait, what? I'm not just saying it. Like, I mean that I hated, I never wanted this to define me. I never wanted anything to do with it. Um, I, 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 I came to the conclusion that I could do it. Uh, Aaron was a big part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, Aaron's not perfect. Uh, far from it. Maybe, you know, so am I. Okay. <laughs> what? Yeah. And, uh, but me, so. yeah, but you know, uh, they, you know, my, 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 my kid brother spent seven years, the age of 20, 16 to 23 on the, uh, re in their re-education camp because okay, he slept with his girlfriend. Oh, he's talking about Scientology. Consensual um, sex guys with somebody he was in a relationship with. And that violated the rules where you could not do anything before marriage. That's, yeah. that's what happened. Just to, just to like clarify for the yeah. people at so, home. So, you know, I was not like, okay, so he hasn't like introduced himself. Like, this is like, he just fucking just starts talking. Just fucking start, fucking just hell starts talking. Come out against anybody. But when I felt like this, the, the color of this thing was to shame uh, Aaron over sexual stuff that I would have probably told him, dude, what are you doing? Okay. So it wasn't, nobody was shame. So he's talking about the, talking about any number of incidents, but he's in November of 2023, we were covering this in real time, um, to much to the chagrin and annoyance probably of the audience here. Um, he was not shamed for sexually. He like pretty clear. It's pretty clear to me now that he like assaulted a woman he was hooking up with. <laughs> uh, okay. That's not sex. Like, okay, because but, the, you have but when the shaming, your friends, when, when yeah, when the shaming came in, or this idea that Aaron did that so he shouldn't be associated with, or something right. like that, that was upsetting based on my life experience. Oh, what are you? Did you also beat up somebody you were sleeping with? Mm -hmm. Of, I have a, I think, you know, a kind of unique story these days. Um, uh, in the sense that I was born and then taken from the hospital by, you know, naval, pseudo naval people to a, you know, a baby machine, uh, what? in downtown Los Angeles. Right. Yeah. And then spent the next pseudo, but the pseudo, does he mean the sea org? Cause those people are dressed like bellhops, not like the Navy. They're dressed like a fucking bellhop. Teen years of my life, um, in that machine until we, you know, escape for, for to Oregon for a couple of years, for a few years, where I got a, a reprieve for just a few years, and then it was back into it, right? Yeah. So, so you know. So, in the other interview, by the way, when you talk, like the other the interview that we listened to on the Intellectual Dollar Tree, Scientology didn't come up. He was like born and bred in the mean streets of the fucking bad neighborhood in fucking Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah, or grew up homeless. Like that's the fucking thing. Is like both right like he was he was they were bouncing from place to place he was in the fucking he was growing up in the ghetto like all that shit happened but now that he's on with oh no nora he was fucking indoctrinated into the fucking cult of scientology from birth right like this guy is like he can't he he can't keep this straight because it's probably bullshit it's it's it, it's much harder to keep track of bullshit for I'm not against anybody. You know, I've, I've been appreciative, like maybe eight, nine years ago, Chris Shelton stuff kind of helped me. I liked it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I had a really good conversation with him one time. And as I've said in multiple, you know, conversations now that I've chosen to talk, um, 
you know, Mike Rendered Leah's show is game changing for me. I don't think I'd be here talking right now. Yeah. If, yeah. So it's 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 a very it's nuanced and it's 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 uncomfortable, <laughs> right? Because but that's not, because this guy was like a motivational speaker and shit. Look him up. Look up Jamie Mustard author and look up the the the, the career track. He was like fucking speaking at like TEDx and fucking all these like. Uh, there's weird fucking like influencer conferences before we had language around like the idea of being an influencer. Like yeah, he was like, I'm he was not, like a keynote speaker. Again, TEDx. Yeah. I'm, I'm what I am is trying to be for myself. And sometimes when I see my fellow kids that grew up on the business end of this thing, yeah. Uh, you know, going ape shit on YouTube, like, a certain friend of mine did 40 minutes ago. Okay. <laughs> Wait, right. <who>? What? <laughs> uh, what, what goes on in my head is like, this is also fucking too familiar. Paris. It's fucking weird. These people, if, if this was like a regular community of people creating content and trying to help people, they would like act like more like colleagues. Not not that everybody's got to be fucking best friends. It's so fucking weird. So fucking weird. You know, I don't. We don't agree on everything. You and I. Like last night, I had Joni on. We're obviously very friendly. Very. We had a great time. But we're colleagues. We do some version of the same thing, and we like to work together sometimes. Time. Oh, <laughs> guys, yeah. if you could record our disagreements about things, people are like, are you guys friends? First of mm. all. I did say Jamie is my brother from another mother. Full disclosure, because the people are like, they kind of do look alike. We are not related by birth. Uh, we are bonded, obviously, by our... Wait, no, this guy looks like Juan Maserati. But also, you knew my pops. And so I you're one of the father. few... Yeah, you're one of the few people on the planet Earth who had a, a, a very close, intimate relationship with my dad. I don't and know so, if I would call it close and intimate. Well, I knew you know him. what I mean. Well, yeah. Okay, like, let's yeah, I mean, I, I knew another him. rumor. Uh, I knew but... him, and he was a force. Oh, my <laughs> fucking... This guy is so insufferable. I mean, Nora's not... Nora's no fucking peach either, but this dude is fucking insufferable. A significant yeah. person to me, you know? He... Hey, he me? This guy? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm gay. Yeah, Being gay is I'm fine. Gay. I just hope that... I don't know if he is like good for him. He, my 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 best friend worked for him. Yeah, and uh, when he was a PI, and we were teenagers, uh, and and just the name Con Sova, like what? Yeah. The, who has a name like that? Right, it's and just, just such a radio and, name. Just such like a, yeah. he could have been a star. I mean, you know, I, I tell you that guy. If you were around that guy, no, I'm just kidding. it's fine. 80s, you are right. You're you're here all the time, Glitzy Mouse. He. Was, he was like right out of. Like, oh, you know that you figured that out. Yeah, Fucking good yeah, for you. He was right out of like a a nineteen seventies Hollywood film noir. <laughs> you, you know, you know, and he had a presence. I mean, everything about him, the yeah. way he wore his hair, <laughs> oh, yeah. the way he walked, the way he smoked, yeah. like the way he, he smoked. Cool. Yeah, he was cool. <laughs> I want to remember. I remember going over to his house. You would have been a little girl in downtown LA. Mm -hmm. He's like checkered floor oh, tile yeah. house near the knickerbocker and <laughs> <laughs> not far from the yeah. baby machine not yeah. far from the baby machine i think it's bullshit i don't think he knew this lady's dad and I, I think it's bullshit but i'm inclined <laughs> i'm like very cynical i don't believe anybody i don't believe shit that like this is bullshit though right i don't know if i was your mother or your stepmother but there was kids running around you must have been one of them yeah and uh you know yeah, my stepmom a, the tall willowy lady with a picture yeah yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that, that was, was my stepmom like, yeah she had like a gingerish blonde hair i'll never mm -hmm. forget that yeah do you think this guy's charismatic because i i mean but it, yeah. fucking it's probably like probably because i'm like I've been following not, not just the Scientology thing, but like I've been covering grifters for a long time. So I just like fucking, I'm, I just like, this is grifter shit. Never met anyone in the world like Consova until yeah. I met Consova, your dad. He uh, was a, he was a juggernaut. He was a force of nature, yeah, that man. Yeah. yeah. RIP daddy, wherever you are. <laughs> so what I was saying, so, yeah. so what I was saying about, I think it's more like hot reading, right? Because he's had uh, conversations with her. I don't, I don't know for sure that he didn't know her dad, but he might have like maybe met her dad once or whatever. And like fucking, he's like, he's like hot reading. I don't, I'm not really trying to be against anyone. What my, yeah. my view is that even though sometimes I watch you guys on the web and I'm like, okay, they're doing it differently than I would do it. You, you know, <laughs> uh, my, I feel a loyalty. 
I, you know, like, there, like I, there's a brotherhood or a sisterhood or sure. something that we have that it's like surviving a war with somebody. I'm not against uh, those guys over at, you know, uh, you can say where they're from. Uh, I'm the just for, math foundation. I'm, I'm for myself. I'm for myself and I'm for the people that have a shared experience that I'm that I resonate with. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and so see, like this um, stuff, fucking, I'm like this stuff, like, ooh. I don't really feel like I feel like I was put into an impossible situation. You put me in a situation where I have to choose to go after somebody. I'm not. Gonna, I'm going to choose not to do it. <laughs> okay, yeah. you put yeah. me in a situation. Where Nobody's putting. You're not being put in a situation. If you like go after, if you go after somebody. It might be because you think they're like doing like harm to the world or that they're lying or that they're a fraud. You're not put in that situation. If I don't stick up for someone that I'm, you know, I just can't do it. You know, I, I, I feel no, you're, like you're a man of honor and you Ooh, not true on, you know, the difference between right and wrong. I mean, like the reason why let's talk about why you why you wrote this book why did you like you're you're an artist you're an author uh you oh i thought he was a marketing professional or a keynote speaker or like where's his art working on you know educating uh people around the world uh on things what on things you're educating people around the world on things made you go you know what this needs to get into the hands of as many people as possible well, during COVID well, no matter what book you write, we live in a capitalist society, so you're hoping people buy it. <laughs> therapy for the first time, or right before COVID, a year before COVID. Hey, see yeah. therapy. Yeah, I got diagnosed with uh, CPS, CPTSD, and laughed in the person's face, and they looked at me a certain <laughs> way. They looked at me a certain way where I felt like I was full of it, and right. then the, the, that person, that social worker, just kind of crashed my facade. It was just like conversations. It wasn't like this the weird stuff that we were kind of raised to believe it was or right. whatever, you know, and, um, nobody lobotomized you or like, yeah, no, electroshock no. Therapy. You, know, you know, and one thing I'll say about that, that's really interesting is that, you know, our, that group, the mothership, they want to hold yeah. accountable all the mistakes that the psychiatric profession has made over the last 200 years, right? right. From <laughs> lobotomies to electroshock to sheeting to all these they're horrible things. Yeah. Okay? Oh yeah. Um, but, they don't want to hold themselves accountable to the way that I grew up in a machine with no parent. But like literally in the last interview we watched, he not a single mention of Scientology because he was talking to that other guy. And I guess he grew up in the ghetto and he would like. The way they bathed me, the way we were raised like animals with no yeah. bed. I mean, I didn't brush my teeth until I was 13 years old. Yo, but that's not what you said in the last interview we watched where you were talking about this fucking book. You said there was a whole ass different story in their dormitories. I never because went to school. Yeah. So, so that stuff, eh, you know what? That, that just happened. Yeah, <laughs> that's ancient history. That's ancient history. Just move on, move on. Yeah. But, but yeah. when the, but when the, uh, the psychs do it, when the psychiatrists do it, it's who they are. It's what they're about. It right. represents all of them. So, you know, there's a little bit of talking out both sides of the mouth right there. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, like, wait, wait, wait. Where have I heard that before? What, like, like in all of the, like, this doesn't even just what he said so far here about his upbringing. I think it's mutually exclusive with the things that he was saying in the last interview we watched of him on the intellectual Dollar Tree. This thing, I did something, you know, and I braved. COVID, I, I had a doctor that I shared that, that I knew that was a military doctor that had quit TAPS uh, and was going and working for this place that was delivering a biological treatment for uh, post-traumatic stress. I had access to this doctor through my work. Mm. Uh, I was uh, impressed. I'd written this book on art and business uh, before that that had been successful. And uh what, when I wrote that book, really weird if he's an artist that he doesn't have any of his work like behind. I don't know. Maybe not. A renowned psychiatrist, a forensic psychiatrist reached out to me and I was afraid of him, of course. Of my programming. <laughs> right. Yeah. But we, yeah. But we talked and he was cool. <laughs> and so I asked him to vet this treatment for me. One of the most bona fide forensic psychiatrists and neuroscientists in the United States. So those are 
Ooh, I don't know. I'm not sure that a, somebody with a neuroscience degree would tend to go into psychiatry. I'm not saying it's not possible to have degrees and certifications in both, but it doesn't seem likely. And uh, John Faber, uh, he used to run all of behavioral health for Humana. He sent me a bunch of peer reviewed journals, he explained to me how I should process it. He said, listen, what is the downside? What is the risk? But there was right. practically zero. There's, they use an ultrasound. It's been around for a hundred years. I've seen what? Yeah. hundreds and hundreds of these things and never heard of a case out of thousands and thousands. I've never heard of one go wrong. So hold on. So when we looked into this, we were having a hard time finding um, studies on the, the treatment that he's not even named or properly described yet that had what, we would, that it, what a normal person would call robust uh, peer review. And so well, we've been looking into it, Hilda Beast. We've been looking into it. If you want to hit me up, if you want some more information about it, I can kind of clue you in on all of what we've found about this. I braved, went to Chicago. It was like vanilla sky and got this experimental <laughs> procedure. Cause I thought if I'm not crazy, if post-traumatic stress is a physical injury and not a disorder, Correct. Then, I, then I don't have to deal with this idea of being crazy. So I see, liked it. But see also, you're not the only person that's discussing uh, PTS, uh, you know, like having this as a physical injury. That's why it's literally being renamed guys in the medical vernacular from PTSD, D standing for it's uh, not post-traumatic stress disorder to PTS. I to post-traumatic stress. This is not, right. this is n no, 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 this is not the consensus. It's fine. And if it got renamed to this because we considered it like a like a psychological injury versus a disorder, that what the fuck difference does that make to like the average person anyway? So medical science, psychiatry, psychology, they're all recognizing. No, this is not true. Evolving and constantly absorbing new information and growing with that, that it is a physical injury to the brain for. This is like, this is not the state of the art in, in mental health. It is not. And changing it, changing the terminology from PTSD to PTSI changes nothing for most people that are living with post-traumatic stress. It changes nothing. The change in terminology means a fuck all, even if it were true. For people who have experienced any type well, of like, you know, severe trauma, right? I would say it's a physical injury to the nervous system. Right. And, to the and body. The, and the brain. <laughs> but yes, I mean, the nervous system and the brain. Okay. Meaning the way we think it works and you can see. This but who's we? You're a fucking, you're a marketing guy. Or I, if I were to scan someone's brain uh, that had serious trauma i would see, on an mri i would see overactivity in their amygdala mm -hmm. if i were to do this treatment on them and then scan them 15 times over the that's the other thing he like it he waits so long to actually describe the treatment two weeks to account for any variation because our brains you know go up and down oh yeah i would find that there is a been a a sharp and likely permanent reduction in that activity right right that's the thing is like that you don't like like when you do a brain scan, you're looking for specific kinds of, I don't even know enough about it, but I can't, there isn't just like a catch all. We did a brain scan and there's activity. All right. What the, what the fuck does that mean? Like this is, this, this is like trying to oversimplify something highly technical, but then act like you're an expert in it is another fucking red flag. Um, and so what we believe is happening is that when you get this, you know, who's we? Who's we, what we believe is like, he's like now including himself in, in, in like, uh, like a, what he's claiming to be like a growing and influential body of scientific research that doesn't exist. And, but even if it's like a fringe or like a niche area of scientific research, he's including himself in it, but he's, he hasn't done any of the fucking work. Like when you have a traumatic event, you get elevated. Yeah. Um, when you get too elevated? Like in sexual assault or uh, or uh, what do you uh, war here, uh, right. or or if you just say in chronic stress too long, which is the more common way someone gets this, 
your body has a physiological reaction. Like, and what happens is your brain emits norepinephrine and which is associated with anxiety and people mm -hmm. with post-traumatic stress have 20% more norepinephrine in the brain and your nervous system, which is here and here, you're sympathetic. And okay. This is an oversimplification of your nor this. That's, that's like, I, I've been like, <clears throat> again, I've been like trying to, trying to, first of all, trying to even figure out like the source of this guy's claims is very difficult. Um, but we found some of it thanks to the help from some of the people in the strangely enough, the PTS discord, it has nothing to do with post-traumatic stress. It's a L Ron Hubbard term, uh, potential trouble source. I've been trying to track this down. I've hit up, um, probably not speaking out of talking out of school. It was a while ago, but I hit up a homozygote markets about this because I thought maybe he would be able to help me a little bit. And he was like, well, I don't know. This looks fucking, this looks a little crazy to me. I mean, that's not his words. It's my words, but that was sort of what I got from him. And, uh, and you're and like, Marcus is like a postdoc. <laughs> He's like in, in like some, some field of like neurology or neuroscience. Your brain emit what's called NGF nerve growth factor. So it causes nerves, dormant nerves to sprout in the amygdala. Wait, what, what does that mean? Like, what, like, like, what is that? Like, look at, like, Nora's like sitting there. Oh, that's scary. But like, Nora doesn't know what that means. I don't know what, you know what that means? Somebody here in chat might know what that means, but maybe it doesn't mean anything. That when sounds they, bad. They, but That yeah, sounds but bad. Yeah. But like, if you don't know, like, what? Well, but that's not the right answer because you, you don't know what that means. So could you, why wouldn't you be like, I don't know what that means? Yeah, so, <laughs> so, so then all it really means is that uh, you're, um, you're elevated all the time, right? Yeah. So now, no, 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 dormant nerves sprouting. Like what? That doesn't, it doesn't probably doesn't affect your mood. And like, if, if you have n nerve growth or whatever, like what, the, what the dormant, are they just laying around there? Like dormant nerves, just kicking it. So like, typically if like you were at a fight and a, t or if you were at a jungle 2000 years ago and a tiger jumped out of nowhere, you're meant to be in that Oop, fucking took him a while, but he mentioned the tiger already tiger fight for about 30 to 90 seconds where you either kill the tiger, get eaten by the tiger or run or get away from the tiger. Yeah. That's fight or flight. I've already, we, we were talking about this on a fucking, on a fucking intellectual dollar tree. Uh, by the time you're running from the tiger, it's over. You dead. Tiger is faster than you. It can turn more quickly than you. It can climb better than you. If you are at the point where the tiger is chasing you, unless you have like a pretty powerful firearm that you can shoot behind you, uh, you dead. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but what happens is that if you stay, but if, if the, if you, if the tiger, if, if, if the trauma is too much, then this NGF stays on, causing the sprouting, mm -hmm. causing you to be stuck. Yeah, unfortunately for Jamie Mustard, by the time the tiger's chasing him, you don't he don't have any friends anyway. Ooh, who do you think run faster, Jamie or uh, Nora? It's a biological injury. Obviously, we know, like you know, someone can see a car accident and have a heart attack if they're old. No one touched them. Wait, what? So we know that when we have an experience that is traumatic, it has a massive biological effect on us. And we see this. Nor can I bet, I bet you're right. A dog or a zebra or a horse or a cat or a cow, a goat, any animal, take a horse and traumatize it or a dog and just, tr and, and just torture it Yeah. for a month and then put it up in the Ritz Carlton for the rest of its life. <laughs> it, it's, it's never going to be the same. It's always going to, it's going to be now an aggressive horse or an aggressive dog, right. or it's going to be a timid horse or a timid dog fight or flight. This is all fucking like, this is like, I was, I would have going to call this like pop psychology, but this is like n not even good pop psychology. We know that when someone undergoes a traumatic event, that it changes their biology. And now we know how, and now we can, we can retune this to the promised state. I know that uh, Dr. Shelton says that it's pseudoscience okay um okay so first of all i have i have my my problems with doctor with chris shelton i don't like chris shelton um uh, primarily because he's uh in, endeavored to undermine me behind the scenes and um which isn't very nice because i never did anything like that to him but he never does not claim to have a phd 
He has a uh, master's degree in coercive control. He didn't have to do his undergrad because he had a YouTube channel or some shit, but he does not claim to be a doctor. He does not claim to have a PhD, nor does he claim to be a medical doctor. I don't really want to come out. He's not a doctor. It's just a master's. Let's not, let's not give him other things. Okay. I mean, I, I, and again, I, I, I mean, I, I don't want to be mean, but I, that was frustrating for me. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, because a. Oh, boy, howdy. Would you if you got frustrated with a fucking whiny ass Chris Shelton friendo? Boy, howdy, would you get frustrated with me? Because I actually fucking have done the work on medical misinformation. I've done the work on grifters. I know how this shit works. I, I know not how fucking the bullshit science you're saying works. But I know everything that you're doing, why you're doing it, how you're doing it. Boy, howdy, would you get frustrated if you fucking ever were to have a run in with me, Mr. Mustard. I don't think anyone should ever. Um, I think when someone's experienced child essay, they should just be left alone. Whether they're wrong, whether Thank they're you. right. Yeah, whether they're wrong. Well, wait a minute. No, 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 no. So uh, I tend to agree that if you meet somebody who's experienced something traumatic and they have weird beliefs around the thing that they're, they've, they've experienced, it was traumatic. That it's not, not, it's not time to go like Reddit skeptic on them and argue with them. But that's entirely different than if somebody is using that as a shield when they're telling other people to have an un, have a medical procedure that is untested and unproven for the thing that they're they're suffering with. Now I don't give a fuck what happened to you. Now you're the baddie, right? And one should you know make an answer make an answer say that if someone's really sick and has a disease and is dying that we should be caring and empathetic towards that person too. Um, I could be the, caring and empathetic about their condition. Absolutely. And I do have empathy and, and care for that particular condition because it is brutal and it's very hard no matter what kind of cancer you have. But like I always say, more than one thing can be true at once, right? The fact that that person, and we're of course talking about Mr. Rinder, um, has cancer doesn't then negate his actions, which he seems perfectly capable of doing during cancer, of harming. So Mike Rinder has shut the fuck. I think Mike Rinder is more sick than uh, is being let on. I'm just speculating, but he's uh, mostly gone from the public eye. Um, and that's fine. His, his medical condition is private. Other people. Right. And he has a right so to privacy not, around that. Actually, you know what here's I mean. What I, yeah. yeah. Here's here's what I would say. He's a complicated guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's a complicated yeah. man. Right. Like the show really helped me. I don't think I'd be in this be where I am right now mentally. I don't think I would have written that book without the aftermath. If I was if I was ill, and it looked like things were getting worse, I would hope that all of you would respect my privacy came to write is I got the treatment. It absolutely transformed my life because I wasn't stuck on all the time. For my other book, I got invited to speak to special forces at Fort Bragg. Mm -hmm. um, and while I was there, I become friends with this. This is the, so this suggests like this is also suggesting that the, the military like the military um, like military education is immune to grifters. And I just don't think it is. I think that no matter what kind of institution you're in, there's going to be superstitions and there's going to be blind spots and uh, there are going to be ways in which you get, you can be uh, tricked by a grifter. I think that all of us, even though we talk about this stuff all the time here, I think that there's a, you know, there's a non-zero chance that one day I'll get fucking hooked up by a grifter or one of you will get hooked in by a grifter. Doctor, they said I could bring some friends along. My speaking agent came down from New York. Uh, my, the doctor came with me. I, I brought an entourage to Fort Bragg. And uh, they, the, the colonels that had invited me that ran the training for the special forces there, they invite, They said, hey, why don't, we take, why don't you stay an extra week and we'll, we'll take you on a post-traumatic stress tour of uh, special forces. And so I, I... This is bullshit. This is one of the... I think this is one of those things that we cannot verify or falsify. I don't think that... Uh, yeah, I think this is one of those things like that fucking ex CIA guy that we talk about where you can't very, we, I'm not, you can't just call, be like, has this guy been speaking to the special forces? That'd be like Jamie who.
I, I, I said yes and, and got all these meetings and, and got to meet with a bunch of these guys. And um, That's amazing. Yeah. Except that it might not be true because this is something that they don't talk like that. That's This is like he's talking again about an elite force where there's a lot of secrecy and security around what's happening. Oh, I remember the body language guys. Those guys are great. Yeah. And so uh, and they were still calling it PTSD. Right. And treating these guys like they were crazy. Special forces are best when I got to Fort Bragg. Right. And now I'd seen enough. You know, so I, I this, uh, this just doesn't track anyway. Like Fort Bragg is like a. Once somebody's. Is there, is there a military hospital at Fort Bragg? Actually, I'm, I could be wrong. I bet there's a military hospital at Fort Bragg. I'd read enough and seen enough that I did not believe it was a disorder. Um, we know it's a physical injury. Right. I think 38 states have now changed the name from PTSD to PTSI now. Something like yeah. that. Are you sure? It's awesome um, that it's happening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so it's, and it's really, is this so the case? Have 38 states changed the name? And like, what, what does that mean? So, so, so that's, so I think, that I think at least I bet there's fucking just like stuff on the, like on the record in 38 states referring to it in this way. Not, not like some edict that we will be referring it to the, this way instead of this other way. Right. I think he's, this is probably a gigantic exaggeration, if not just fucking complete confabulation. Up and I've been reading about, even though I was illiterate, I could read it a high level from when I was young. When I was 19 years old, I couldn't write <sighs> beyond maybe a four year old, and I couldn't even do basic math. So you would yeah. think that if he was talking about like Fort Bragg, he would mention that he was at, like at the Fort Bragg, that he was at the Fort Bragg Medical Center. He might not no specifically that's like the womack center but they, they, you would think that he would mention that he was at the medical center right because he's acting like it, it the way he's telling us it's like he was talking to like active like special forces which they're not letting this guy talk to active special forces and if he did they would never there would be no way for me to verify this because this is a secretive branch of the military by its very nature it has to be secretive yeah, I could do basic addition and subtraction like you would see in kindergarten, but long division right. or anything like that. No way. And so, um, but I could read at a high level and I've been studying these books for a long, you know, the, the you know, how the mind worked since I was right. an infant. <laughs> and uh, so. Wait, what? But I don't know what books. Just name five. I bet this motherfucker, because I don't, I don't do this. I would never do this. This is so disingenuous. I would feel fucking so gross if I ran around telling everybody that I had done my own fucking research and that I've been studying shit since I was a kid. I like the only thing that I even talk about in this way is that I've been talking about disinformation, online influence and cult and control groups, but you can find me. You, you know that I do this. This is what I do. I've been doing this for a while. Even when I was running my business, I was talking about conspiracy communities and how they sort of intersect with cults. You can hear like the sort of beginnings of like what I'm thinking that like the way that I think that the, the, they interact with one another, conspiracy communities and cults. You can hear that the second time I talked to John Atac, we, I started like fleshing that out in my mind. I was bouncing some of it off of him. You can hear that. Like, I don't, I don't have to pretend. Oh, I, you are Pupu Sama. I'm sorry. We were mean to each other yesterday, but it was funny. It was, it was good. We were having a, having a, have a couple yucks together. I'm glad you're here, Pupusama. Also, I'm sorry about the uh, content. I was did a post-traumatic stress meeting one day with a bunch of guys that had come back from Afghanistan that had gotten this treatment. And this guy that ran the special the health initiatives task force at Fort Bragg, uh, Jeff Dardia, he showed me um, this definition of operator syndrome on his phone of what happens when you're in a war zone, even if you're never in a firefight, you're just in the stress of a war zone for more than 12 to 18 months. So you're like IEDs are going around, things are happening to your friends, you're, right. hearing, you're, just, you're away from your family. So it's also, and I don't know if it might just be like access. It's also interesting that he only brings up the like soldiers in like elite, like in elite parts of the military. He, Never talking about like PTS, but we'll just call it post-traumatic stress so that we're not fucking doing whatever. 
He never talks about it in the context of people who uh, live in a war zone, who are civilians. You're going to see them. You're basically carrying what they call all allostatic load, toxic stress. Mm. Allostatic. What is allostatic? That sounds like allostatic load, toxic stress. When you carry that for too long, even if you're never in a fight. It's all really jargony. Thing called operator syndrome. Well, when I looked at the symptoms for operator syndrome, um, hypervigilance, hyperarousal, uh, uh, high reactive, you know, rea like a reactive I feel behavior. Attacked. Yeah, so yeah, uh, <laughs> chronic sense of doom, uh, lack of sleep. Right. Um, all things that you would experience if a tiger was running from you, you'd be hyper aroused, hyper active. Oh, you'd that's right. Uh, the tiger, the tiger again, everybody, the tiger's chasing you. Sense of doom. They're and then, great. You know, where we grew up around the mothership, uh, where, where violence is acceptable. The old thank you. Form of thank you. Is murder, homicide. And in the military where people are trained to protect the ultimate form of flight is, uh, unaliving oneself. Right. So, so I was looking at these symptoms and I, and I called the doc and I said, this looks like, um, uh, an overactive sympathetic nervous system to me, not for, and, and there was no, so remember this guy said that your sympathetic nervous system is centered in your neck. So it's like some version of protect your neck. This is, this is just from chronic stress. And he said, I never thought about it, but I think you're right. And that, you know what I, Someone who's talking to this guy should beat him to the punch and uh, uh, dress as a tiger. He joined down a pathway that uh, like a tiger hand puppet. Book. So what happened was that these this doc and these people that are taking this to the world are doing incredible work. And they're very concerned with the military, sexual assault victims, right. first responders. But when I saw that operator syndrome, I didn't see soldiers. When I saw this over at this, this I saw the neighborhoods where we grew up. I saw Mexican yeah. immigrants. So wait, I thought you grew up in Scientology. And the kids that I grew up with. Yeah. And, and I thought you fucking, but wait, he's like contradicting himself in some sort of way, right? Because I thought he grew up in science. I'm not saying that you can't like, well, no, I am kind of saying actually that Scientology don't want no fucking people from the fucking hood. They just want to like, they just want to use the concept of the hood and their white savior propaganda. But they don't want you if you're from the hood, friend. They want money. And that made me think that there was a huge swath of the U.S. and global population that needed this treatment that didn't even know, that thought they were crazy, and no one no one cared about I them. I don't like the point. use of the word crazy here either. I'm trying to tell you people, we've been talking about this a lot. I'm trying to train myself out of like using it to describe people. I just want to use it to describe behavior or situations. But no, if you, if you have post-traumatic stress, I... I don't think you're crazy and you shouldn't think you're crazy. You've, you have post-traumatic stress to answer the question. Yeah. But back to the other, back Wait, to what? I cared about them. And that's what led to the book to answer the question. Yeah. Wait, what just but happened to his voice there? Is he possessed? Back to the Australian. Okay. The Australian. Oh, Mike. Okay. 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 I don't have, I can you mean lady B this guy don't want none of lady B the things that he's done for me. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the, the, you know, I had a very nice conversation with him at one point. The Australian. Um, I think he's what he did in the Tampa Bay Times. That was one of the reasons. Oh, he means Mike Rinder. I lost all my friends in a day when I read that thing. That oh, was yeah. The, that was the turning point for me to be at least not under the radar. And um, but I thought it was Leah's show. He just helped me once. Do we know for sure this guy was in Scientology? I'm serious. Do we know for sure this guy was in Scientology? Any of the any of the PTS community here? Any of the? Oh, we do. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I, I trust Miss J. Everything changed. The game changed with the aftermath. I mean, it stood on the shoulders of Gibney and Lawrence Wright and and Janet mm -hmm. Wrightman and all these incredible people. But it changed the game. It brought it into the living room. Listen, it's it's doing it now again because a new audience years later is finding uh, Leah's show and discovering like, holy shit, these stories are awful um, and we need to do something about this. It's re-motivating people in a new time because the truth of the matter yeah, is- It's the Tigers guy, Lady B. We, we just summoned you. I could he was talking about the Australian and I'm like, fucking, he didn't meet no Lady B.
all day and we wouldn't even touch the t you know we could be here for six hours we wouldn't even touch like a, a foot into the iceberg uh, no, this is, is like our uh, we watched like 15 minutes of something else with him and got bored because he was like talking about like how to art grift or something but yeah he was probably i mean i don't know like i me and hk haven't had a, a laugh like that in a while it's the, the tigers guy that we grew up with and everything else because that's what i would always say to people about leah's show i said listen they covered what they could legally say on television okay and it's the tip of the tip of the tip of the iceberg uh, of of these stories because there were certain things um that couldn't be aired because it was so graphic in nature and things like that not because it wasn't yeah. true but because like networks like a and e and things like that they have rules hey any do you remember when a and e meant acid and ecstasy anybody remember that um the fcc and everything has rules on what can go on network television we don't want people you know millions of people throwing up in their mouths on cable all no. over the world yeah, yeah. so no, it's just you know there's rules but i mean it's like every single one of those stories that aired is horrific yeah and so, was a tragedy okay so listen so i'm very frustrated um with uh, mr shelton uh, based on the I mean, me too, but for entirely different reasons. Chris Shelton probably got this guy nailed the same way that I do. This dude's a fucking grifter. But it, you don't have to be a fucking genius to figure out that this is bullshit. Comments that you sent me, mm -hmm. uh, because I believe that, you know, like, you know, he knows better. He's calling it pseudo science, but the pro, but the he's not he's he's saying that the thing you're talking about is a pseudoscience and it is and i'm not i'm not here i'm not the most likely person in the world to jump to that motherfucker's defense i don't like him but it's true it is pseudoscience there's like one study that has like fucking problems uh including that 20 percent of the people in the study didn't even have fucking ps ptsd And that there was a different measurement like rubric used at the beginning to test people's like level of uh, stress anxiety i don't know exactly what they were testing for that something something were, uh, to test the level i guess of their their ptsd and they used one rubric at, at the at the beginning and then they used a whole different rubric at the end to test like people's level of of uh, i guess the impact of ptsd on their well-being and that's that sounds like a problem to me the trauma chair, Stephen Porges, one of the most famous neuroscientists in the world, and the trauma chair at the Kinsey Institute, right, um, uh, endorses this uh, procedure. And if you read the quote that he says about the procedure, and the do they endorse this? Like, who are these in the Kinsey Institute? Is he talking about like that sex study? That was groundbreaking work, and it was like, really interesting. But it was also like not. There's no, uh, we got, uh, we got something. We got something for that. It's, uh, I actually, I got another one. Um, Could everyone casually shut the fuck up? These are science. And it, it wasn't randomized control. It was like a survey. It was like self-reported survey. It was a, a very interesting work. And it showed that people be, people be horny. It showed that like, we need to start building more horny jails. Or maybe just not worry so much about it. <laughs> Don't build the horny jail. Right. But this, but this guy knows more. This guy knows more than the, the this guy knows more than U.S. Congress. He knows than the U.S. Congress. Is this now congrat? Like this is the problem here is that these are individuals. This is why we don't do this. We don't cite individuals as the expert that told us things. We need to determine if something is correct. We need consensus among experts. And then the real way to test if something works is the experts in the field do the science and then the engineers apply it. That's how we really know some shit works, right? That's fucking that's like your computer, your cell phone, all that shit. It's like a science applied as engineering. Now we know all that shit works. More than special forces. Than the entire than the Veterans Force. Administration. Yeah, yeah, he knows more than the VA. He knows more like, than This is not endorsed by the VA. I did not find anywhere that this is endorsed by the VA. I didn't find that anywhere. Anybody like I found this nowhere.
He knows more than the Department of Defense. And that's really frustrating because I don't want comments like that to get people to keep people from getting what is a very safe treatment that is 80 that is 85 to that is effective for the most I hate to say this because I don't like him but I'm with Chris Shelton on this trauma 85 to 90 percent of the time that's been those are unheard I have to pause you for a second that's unheard of success rate and that should be a reason that you should be skeptical There is no antidepressant on the market that has those numbers. There is no talk therapy that has those numbers. And you should be skeptical when you get this kind of number on anything having to do with like mental health treatment. Right? We're not. We don't have. You should be very skeptical of anything where you're starting to say 90% of efficacy in something not, not poorly defined, but I, I'm not even sure the word nebulous is correct, but something with a varying, um, this varying menu of symptoms. I said, cause we could say post-traumatic stress has like a varied menu of symptoms and behaviors and ways in which it affects your life where it's not that, it's not that like treatments can't be found and that they can't be good, but things are going to be a little muddy because we're dealing with, we're dealing not only with like just your mental health as it just altogether, but you're dealing with people doing it's like self-reported because it can't not be in some ways. Like you're dealing with this, this, this thing that is difficult to understand and difficult to quantify in a lot of ways. It's not that the fucking field is bullshit. And anybody who's in the fucking bullshit in the fucking field of mental health will tell you that sometimes things are hard to quantify. So these kinds of like 90%, you should be very skeptical. You should be very, you should be cynical. In fact, in terms yeah. of efficacy, right? So yeah. that is, that is huge. That is yeah. not like a minor thing. <laughs> It improves therapy so much too, because right. when you don't have the, Oh, they're also doing therapy. So like the other thing, the other problem with the study that, that they're, they keep, that there's one study that I see all this referencing where the people that they're, that first of all, 20% of them don't even aren't even diagnosed with any kind of post-traumatic stress. Good for them, <laughs> by the way, probably easier if you're, you know, if you're, if your levels of anxiety are, are below the threshold, probably good for you. Right. But then these people, the people that they're they're talking about, are st still taking their meds and still engaging in talk therapy. Now, the point of the medication and the talk therapy is that over time, you are going to get better. And you can't do this kind of study where you're like, oh, well, we're just going to take everybody off their meds and stop sending them to talk therapy. That's fucking barbaric and fucking like unethical to do so. So again, you're going to end up the results are are going to be murky, and that's fine. But then that means you got to wait. That means these things are going to take time. You're going to need multiple studies. You're going to need uh, like rigorous peer review. You're going to need, you're going to need a duplication of these studies, not just in the United States and not just with people in the military. You're going to need duplications of these studies on civilians on, you know, uh, fucking former cops who have post-traumatic stress. I don't know from seeing a bag of fentanyl. I don't know what they got the post-traumatic stress from uh, people who were in abusive situations or like chaotic home situations who have uh, um, uh, symptoms of post-traumatic stress. You're going to need all these different kinds of studies. Hopefully these studies are, do this across cohort where it's not just military or just uh, uh, victims of DV or just victims of like uh, problematic childhoods or just victims of cults. You're going to want studies that cross all these groups of people. And you're going to need a lot of them because this shit is it's by its nature. It's harder to quantify than than other kinds of uh, studies and experiments. Logical coming in on you so hard, then then other forms of therapeutics are more effective. Right. And I explain that we explain that in detail. I mean, the book is a data book. It's an argument for sure. It's me, you know, 
you know, I, I mean, I know. Also, uh, word on the street is uh, him and this doc didn't even write the book. I can't verify that. This is the, one of the things I've been trying to verify that people have been saying it, is that uh, book was ghost written. I can't verify this. I don't think the people that are saying it are lying, but I can't verify it. You know, obviously I knew when I came out that there would be people that would, right, there's a, there's some, some gap between these people are lying and these people are wrong. There's a huge gap there. We deal actually, we exist in that, in that gap. A lot of the time here on this channel, when we're talking about conspiracism and propagandists, right? We talk a lot about like, it kind of doesn't matter if the person who believes the thing that they're telling, if the, whether or not they believe the thing that they're saying, because it, what matters is like the impact of society and whether or not it's like hurting people, what they're doing, whether they believe it or not, is it like fucking hurting people? Is it contributing to like problems in society? But of the studies I've found on this, I've found, I think three that are inconclusive, but appear to skew toward negative toward this doesn't work. And then the one that does seem to like, it makes, it's not as strong as they say it is. Cause it, it's this, you know, Oh, you know, more research is needed and that's fine. Okay. You got fucking three to one. Uh, no, no problem with continuing to do the research. The, the unethical, the fucked up thing here is now they're, they're going around like fucking hucking this to fucking former Scientologists. And the, the reason this whole thing blew up in the anti-Scientology community is they were trying to get the Aftermath Foundation to fucking pay for this. And if you're running a charity you, and you have limited resources, maybe don't pay for this because you, there are things that that aren't, that aren't a fucking, there are things that have like a longer, sure they have like lower efficacy rates or whatever, but that's because no dumb fuck is out there claiming they have a 90% efficacy rate. All this started because, what was her name? Uh, I don't want to, uh, she, she, her name, first name is Miriam. She got hell mad that they, and they, they were even going to pay for it. They just wanted her to sign a standard waiver that like they weren't going to hold her, that she wasn't going to be, or that the charity wasn't going to be held responsible if, if this therapy like hurt the person who wanted it, that's where all this came from. And the other thing, by the way, that I can't find out, I know this is the other thing that I can't for what is Jamie mustard's financial interest in all of this? That's, is it just the book or is there more going on here? Stealthy fed agents. <laughs> Uh, I love it when Stealthy Fed Agent deletes a fucking chat. Obviously, someone was getting too close to the truth. All right, I'll be back. I need another drink. Say things. You know, people say that. What up, Justin? You know about this guy with the shots in the neck that cure PTSD, but also tigers? Yeah, but allegedly, again, like, that's the problem, right? Is it's not. This is all so murky and so fucked up and, like. Uh, this is like. This is like right. There is like actually no story better designed for the com for me for the project that I do here and for the community around here than this story right here. It like hits everything. It hits all of the. Um, it hits all of our. Um, I don't know. It hits all of our triggers. I guess right. Like every. It's got everything. It's got a grifter who used to be a motivational speaker. It's got like the anti-Scientology perverts. It's got like pseudoscience and an untested treatment. It's got, it's got, they're trying to silence me because this, that, and the other. It's got everything. It's like everything we talk about in one horrible story where fucking people are being taken advantage of. It's everything. No, Glitzy Mouse. If stealthy fed agent deletes your chat, it's a joke, right? <laughs> it's a bit. I stealthy fed agent didn't think you were wrong. Stealthy fed agent playing a character thought you were too right. It's, it's a bit. It's funny, <laughs> right? The FBI, the fucking, 
Like that's what happened. It's funny. That's actually the entire reason I made stealthy fed agent a mod. I was like, oh shit, I should make this person pretending. I should make this person a mod because it's funny. I'm not just allowed to spare <laughs> It's a fucking bit. Anyway, I'll be back. I need another drink. You know, whatever. I mean, I, okay. You know, it's like if say I want to sell you some penicillin, okay. And I'm going to make money on it. And I'm not, right. I don't really, I don't make money on it, but say I was going to sell you some penicillin and I was going to make, and I was going to make a fortune on it. Does that mean penicillin doesn't work? No, that's how stupid this is. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I, you know, I just want to make sure that I just want to come forward and set the record straight. If, if yeah. people want to disagree with uh, Congress and the Department of Defense and the Navy SEALs and Stephen and, and Dr. Doc, Dr. Stephen Porges and, uh, uh, and I and I could just go on and on and on. Um, then uh, and the and the winner of the Congressional Medal of Honor, Dakota Meyer, who's talked about this at length on Joe Rogan, right. uh, then they can do it. But it doesn't change the fact of what it is. OK. Right. And, um, uh, you know, so I just want to get back to the Australian for one second, you know, in his defense. And I really want your genuine response to this. OK. Uh, OK. My experience, having lived through what I lived through, and I was never going to talk about it because it was very, it's embarrassing to be that powerless as an infant. And then mm -hmm. the things that went on that happened to me over the next 13 years, it was like an episode of Little House on the Prairie. You, you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you, if you, you know, somebody asked me one time if I would ever write about it. And I was like, who would want to read about that? You know, it'd be like Everybody. watching, like, no, it's like, does someone want to read about somebody strangling a kitten for 300 pages? Like, that's what that was. Right. Like, in right. terms of near death experiences, the living conditions, the psychological manipulation, right. the poverty, the lack of food, the lack of air conditioning, lack of sheets, the lack of laundry, the lack of, I mean, like, you know. Like, all these things he's describing here are like reasons that people get, like, that have trauma, but again, this is so fucked up and they're not somebody in the in a conversation i was having about this earlier says that you know they're not trying to market this to like med, like mental health professionals they're trying to market this like direct to the consumer and that's a fucking problem too Well, like animals. Yeah. Like worse than animals. It's hard to imagine something like that. And again, this goes to my defense of the Australian. I found in my life, and one of the reasons I never wanted to talk about it, wasn't just like, it was mostly shame and humiliation, just em embarrassment. And then you get older. But if this is such a big deal, how, why come the last interview we watched him talk about this on, he didn't even fucking say the word Scientology. The last interview he was on with that fucking weird guy, or fucking what's his name? I forget his name. I was I hit up the fucking conspirituality and decoding the gurus uh, people, and both of them knew about the interviewer. I forget the guy's name now. They both knew about him, but the last time he was like, "I grew up in the ghetto," and not a single mention of growing up in a cult. I don't. I, I believe Miss J, and like it's not just Miss J that's saying this. Like Miss J is right here uh, when Miss J says something that's representing a community that lo that looked into this guy. It wasn't Andrew Gold. It was some other some other punk. But I think did this guy go on Andrew Gold's show? Ooh, what are the what is over under the, the don't look over under that this guy's been on Andrew Gold's show? I bet he has. And then this thing is just kind of strange. It's like there's a guy and he's like a he's like a boat captain. And you know, and there's space, you know, it's it's all Justin. You've seen, you've been on the. Isn't this guy just evil Juan Maserati? A space okay. Navy. Yeah, you know, it's a lot. And so you're like, well, I already lived through that, and now am I gonna yeah. like, right, like I'm gonna identify this as an adult, and then every single person that sees me is gonna see me through that filter. Right. And what Aaron did, love him or hate him, I'm just gonna say what he what he said that got me thinking. Okay. Yeah. He said, I, did he kick your ass after you fucking hooked up with him? Said, I'm not going to talk about this. And, and he said, why? No, he's evil Juan Mazar. He's like Juan's doppelganger. The same way that fucking Jim Lee is my doppelganger. No, I love Juan. Juan's my homie. I love Juan. Juan's a good person. He said, that's not true. They'll just think you're more interesting. 
<laughs> and I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> but it made me think. It made oh, me Aaron. think. He's always, yeah, it, he's a brilliant marketer. I mean, you know, and he knows I, I how to do, I mean, he's, a, he's a brilliant guy in terms of business and other things. No, I under that. Sure. Like, but I mean, no, no, your doppelganger is like, it's, it's not that they just look like you. They're like an evil version of you. At least my, uh, but I'm like fucking, I'm like Naomi Klein pilled on the word doppelganger now. It's like, this is one facet of the Jamie Mustard story. It's not your whole story. It's, it's kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. kind of like I, the way I look at it is like, for me, and this might be still like Scientological, I feel like I have lived many different lives in this one lifetime here as Nora. And like that encompasses like my early childhood, like high school is like another lifetime. And then the Sea Org, and then leaving, and then being an activist, and now coming out of the closet. It's like all these different kind of like chapters. Yeah. Girlfriend, everybody knew you were a lesbian. In yeah. your life. You know, all these things shape us and everything, but it's not the only thing that the evil twin. I think that's the way I think of the word doppelganger is like your evil twin, not evil twin, though. Yes, but I it's different. Your... But again, I'm just fucking Naomi Klein pilled on this like trepidation because that was my big back off on, uh, on speaking out. At how, how was your show, Justin? You rated into my channel after my fucking I don't even know what happened. It's just like fucking something happened and there was no sound coming out. I don't know. How was your show tonight? I just didn't want everybody to be like, Friend. oh, she's the crazy ex Scientologist, like fantastic, fun. I don't even like that yeah. word. I don't even believe, <laughs> I know. I know. I don't even been... believe that. Yeah, because the way I said, the way I tell, I, I don't think I'm that. You know, what I say to yeah. people, it was Patty Hearst. I feel like this guy would crumble if she was, if he was forced to deal with like even just the mildest skepticism of his claims. He would absolutely crumble. Adult. Okay. Right. And she became a lover to the leader of the Symbolese Liberation Army. There are pictures of her holding machine guns, yeah. robbing banks with him. Yeah. Now, does oh, that sounds hot. Patty Hearst, an ex member of Bonnie and Clyde shit. No, they know, know she was groomed. <laughs> they know she was groomed. Right. They know she was conditioned. If you look at the physical conditions that I lived in, what else was I going to do but bond to my captors? Oh, right. Right. You were a child. But I thought you grew up in the ghetto. In in the, in the ghetto, what's that? Fuck! Oh, that sample that's in. Oh, it's such a good sample and all that house music. So, so, so now I'm an ex member of that. Come on, no, like I now don't I don't that way, and I don't. They're full of labels. You know how much so the labels even are. like mild pushback. I mean, this guy just needs somebody to make fun of him. Love it. Us. Yeah, so I'm not gonna. I'm not. <laughs> like this this guy should like talk to Justin. Justin thing. would be having. This Justin, <laughs> this guy would get hell mad. SCN, as you call it is actually a thing. I just right. think it's a big Yeah, problem. yeah, this guy needs this guy needs to have be in an interview. The focus on ridicule. It's like we, there's all this talk when you're growing up of all the research. Oh the yeah. Research. Like <laughs> where are the research notes? Where are the research notes? Where are That's the test notes? It's all the tech falls and the R&D falls. Yeah, I know but, I know but there's no <laughs> there's no notes. It's just outcomes. No. Yeah, it's there's just no bullshit. research. Yeah. No, but, but I don't I'm not, I'm not even going to call it that. So back to Aaron in the Australia. Yeah. Okay. I do think Aaron's more than a businessman and more than just a really good marketer. Oh, um, my yeah, view, yeah. My, yeah, he's a, a fucking uh, a, a, an abuser. He's an abusive person. We've seen. Uh, let's leave the incident and in, uh, during the Masterson thing aside, because there are some people who could didn't like whatever. Uh, we've seen Aaron behaving in an abusive way. Other times. Yeah, my view of this guy is this. Um, he's flawed, like like we all are. I t I see truth. Yo, he got beat up at a fucking bar that he's no longer allowed to go to because he couldn't stop calling this woman a cunt. He just wouldn't stop, and then her boyfriend fucking give him a good smacking. And then he called the cops and like was almost bragged to the cops that he was stalking this woman. In him, he because he's like a like a fucking like a white dude in fucking Clearwater Florida and he knew the cops weren't going to do anything. Like I'm not lying, this is the the tur this is the turn of events. Like before the incident in in during the Masterson trial where he uh, allegedly assaulted uh, uh, a, a woman he was having an affair with, I'd called for his removal from the Aftermath Foundation because of his abusive behavior. It's not like I'm some fucking kind of clairvoyant. 
truth. That's yeah. all it comes down to for me. Like, yeah. I believe when I listen to that guy uh, that he's telling the truth. I don't believe in life. You can't always tell when someone's bullshitting you, but you can tell when people are telling the truth. Yeah. Oh, I think the, I think uh, my, oh, that's a big difference between me and him. Boy, howdy. I can't always tell if someone's telling the truth, but I'm, I'm pretty good at picking up on when somebody's full of shit. And no matter what you think about that guy's behavior, what he's done is he tells the truth. And people can feel that. They know when they're listening to someone authentic. Yeah. And they go, and they go on, and, and that's like a mess. And I may oversample for that because I'm cynical about the world and about people. I may oversample for people being full of shit. But boy, I think that serves me pretty well. I don't end up endorsing shit that's bad. And if... And, <sighs> Like I'm self-aware about like the, the cynicism and uh, cynicism, but I also think cynicism gets a bad rap. If I'm being completely honest here, especially after what happened to fucking internet skepticism, boy, boy, cynicism seems great after the internet skeptics went full gamer gate and shit. That's really just kind of how I break that guy down. Good, yeah. bad, or indifferent. I think you can be flawed and tell the truth. Yes. And, that, and, then, and then that goes to the Australian. I think the Australian would be 10 times as big and popular and more important in the world if he would just say everything he did. The problem is that- What did he do? Oh, this is that fucking, oh, this is that fucking QAnon shit where they're fucking trying to like, yeah, they're trying to save the children this shit. Oh, and, fuck. Know, on that video with John, what was so interesting is they kept talking about illegal activity, something he could be arrested for and prosecuted for. Like, right. That's like so far from where I'm coming from. Like. Illegal activity, let's take my mother, and my mother's abandoned of me. Did my mother technically break the law? Yes. Maybe, I don't know. I'm sure she broke truancy laws oh, for yeah. school. But is, is my mother a criminal that would go to jail for abandoning me like that? Well, let, let me put it this way, because I know people who were- So this is none of our business. And it's, again, another claim that's like impossible. First of all, it's real creepy for me to be like, oh, prove to me that your mom abandoned you. Right. Like, it's creepy. It's it's not acceptable. It, it makes me look like an asshole, even if I like if I don't believe it. And but then I were to challenge this guy on something like that, it makes me look like an asshole. I mean, I kind of am. Protective services. If your parents and other Sea Org parents were reported for how this they were the bringing 70s. you up now no, that's no, true but this is no, the 70s. No, but hey let nora finish that's a weird thing for me to say just saying even in the 70s jamie if okay. those conditions had been reported they would all be in jail and you guys okay. would have ended up in foster care okay, like so what do you what does she think happened to abusive parents in the 70s the answer is nothing if they were white nothing in fact, if maybe if they were not white, nothing because they if they were white. They assumed like they didn't want to put the white people in jail, and if the kids weren't white, they didn't give them a fuck about those them kids. Like so, nothing, nothing happened. It would have been a no brainer. Okay, so let's take that back to the Australian. So when I came back yeah. to L.A. after the the parole in Oregon for a few years in the, in the mid to late eighties, um, as a kid, all my friends in nineteen eighty five or something, all my friends had been. Um, kicked out on the street they've been told either you sign the billion year contract or get out so all right. these kids ah, this is fucking get the i thought your kids i thought your friends were like in the, the in the ghetto like this doesn't now this doesn't track all right this again this doesn't track there's never been a time during which scientology was interested in people from what we would call the ghetto oh they tried to probably make kids sign the contract but this doesn't track there was never a time when this was the case. Just because Scientology does some white white savior bullshit on their fucking 24-hour channel doesn't mean they actually give a shit or want to have anything to do with people from the ghetto. It No, they want money. I know, there's money in the ghetto. Were homeless. Some of them were becoming criminals. They all stayed around Big Blue. It was weird. It was like a weird culture of guys with motor. It was. It's a whole. We could do. No, there wasn't like a culture of fucking kids from Inglewood up to no good that just fucking bummed around the Big Blue building in the fucking Los Angeles. And the, no, this didn't happen. I'm sorry, this didn't happen. Oh, 
on the kids that stayed around the mothership in the 80s that got kicked oh, yeah. out as teenagers. But you had all these 14, 15-year-old kids living together. And uh, some were working jobs in huddled apartments. My friend Mark uh, Peters and Jimmy Ruiz, Mark, God rest his soul, uh, died of a drug overdose a few years ago, uh, mm. like many of the kids that I've lost from those early days. Um, uh, they were living, Mark and Jimmy were living in an abandoned garage um, on Edgemont. Yeah. Was up- the rest of the house not abandoned? Or does he mean like a, like a, like a auto shop? with a top cut off <laughs> okay so um but there was a policy that came out uh right around that time that was signed by the ceo osa that was all about how it was signed by osa international it was all about how the 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 group the movement was managing things with the government to do to get away with the most they could in relation to the kids mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. everything in that document it- i've never listened i've never this is fucking this is str- this is pelled Right here, this is pilled. This is some satanic panic shit. Is probably legal. You know, when you look at the, the initials on the side, it says MR. Yeah. I don't, I, so we know what that means. If they have the initials. The majority the report. That means Mike Rinder typed it. Okay. He knows exactly yeah, so, what it was. It came okay. from him. Yeah. Okay, so. But what document? Could you put it up on the screen? Like a. So did he, was he part of the operation or the purse, the approval that kicked all my friends up? I don't know. He won't say, he says he talks to the FBI. I think talking to the FBI is irrelevant. I think the only thing that matters is talking to the victims and the children first is what's no dude. No, 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 no. If you are the victimizer, uh, uh, not great to reach out to the victims. Even if you think you've reformed yourself or whatever, not great. Leave them alone. Actually. If you've reformed yourself and done the work or whatever, they'll come find you if they want to talk to you. Uh uh-uh. uh. Don't go don't go seeking them out. Fuck that. Relevance. Right. Okay. So I'm not concerned with prosecuting anybody. I want to know what happened to us, who made the decisions, why. I think if the Australian came out and talked about that, he would be a hero. But I also think I- Yeah, even Stealthy Fed agent is like, listen, listen. He's like, you have no idea the blood that is on my hands. Like truth. Yeah, you, yeah. The, the court system is like usually like, y- yeah, yo. Think about this. If you, I don't know, if you like, let's we'll leave like the the sex. Let's say you were a, a, a parent uh, convicted of abusing a, one of your kids. You get some stay away orders, and if you violate them. Like, boy, howdy, is that, is the court system happy to throw your ass back in jail? Set you free in this yeah, case, I think, 100%. Yeah, I also think that he was incredibly damaged by it. We have very different childhoods, and this goes to my question, and this yes. is my defense Ready. of him. Okay. If you read his book, you know, he grew up and he's talking about, you know, this, you know the rolling fields of East Grinstead and the beautiful fields of Adelaide. He had this kind of normal, somewhat idealistic, idyllic, childhood growing right. up nobody that grows up and has a total it was before he grew up in it like when it wasn't as corrupted because he's 15 20 years ahead of us right oh yeah oh yes yeah. it's back when scientology was good you know when elrond was making people walk the plank on the free winds it was before all the draconian policies mm-hmm. or, do- mm-hmm. or doctrine of the the uh the pseudo navy or the private right. navy so the pseudo they dress like bellhops friend they dress like bellhops more humane back then and uh, I don't know that they were telling kids when he was a kid, you're a trillion year old fallen God. that's not allowed to cry. Yeah. Not allowed, allowed to exhibit emotion as a uh, trailer and anything that bad that ever happens to you, like skinning your knees, you pulled it in because you're uh, because you committed transgressions against the world, either in this life in utero or before right. um, that that's a special form of psychological manipulation and torture uh, that even happens to public kids that don't grow up within the space Navy. Um, so I don't know that that's that, a space bellhop, sir. Space bellhop happened to him. Maybe it did. Okay. But what, what I'll say is this, and this is my big question for you. It's the thing that nobody talks about. It's my defense of him. Okay. And it's my defense of Mr. Shelton. Um, but yeah. like Chris Shelton ain't done nothing bad. He's just annoying. He's annoying and whiny and thinks he knows everything. Um, they did not experience what I experienced from, you know, MacArthur Park or from the with we called it that brick building on Beacon Street. It was called the Asho Day House. Right. Tommy's Burgers, where all the babies were kept through 
the Melrose. All the babies were kept. Were there tunnels? Were there tunnels? This part, I don't. I, I don't. What do you mean? Where all the babies were kept? This is some. This is some fucking satanic panic bullshit. This building, which was a house of horrors. I mean, no bed sheets, no showers, no cleaning. Uh, I was on the third bunk at three years old. Uh, constant. Yeah, we're getting really. We're really getting into like. They do hunger games down there. They do adoption and they eat people. Constantly waking up on the floor because I was the one of the youngest kids, waking up to right. military inspections, white clummy, may be forced to white glove clean a slum in the dustiest city in the world. They couldn't. I mean, like a know, slum, I, like the the slum is like the whole neighborhood. Yeah, no, the dustiest city in the world was even the Dust Bowl. Just go on for hours. I don't want to get into the horrors. Of, of abuse that I saw or mm -hmm. how many kids that I know from that building are no longer with us because they unalive yeah. themselves. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I will say that my experience in life is- This sounds awfully traumatic considering it didn't come up at all in the last video that we watched about him talking about his own trauma. That's interesting. In the last video we watched him talking about his own trauma, it was all about growing up in the ghetto. One of the reasons I've remained quiet is it just because it's connected to this thing? And this is my question. And this is my okay. defense of the Australian. I'm ready. And my, def and my defense of, uh, <laughs> all, of all the first generation people that built this, they don't have a lot of empathy for us, especially right. the ones that are out now. They're like, hey, get over it. We all went through it. We're all the same. I don't think anybody's they saying that. Empathy for us. Now, outside of this, this goes, you're, this is what I really want your insight on. My experience is that people that haven't experienced something directly, Mm -hmm. They haven't seen it with their own eyes. Mm -hmm. they, they most human beings have a hard time empathizing with something they haven't seen. Right. And the reality is, is that. Yeah, but he didn't like this weird, right? Because I don't think he started talking about. I couldn't. I don't think he started talking about Scientology until a couple of years ago. Maybe even maybe even 2023. Uh, the Australian wasn't there. And, and Shelton wasn't there. And. I think it would be hard for them to conceive of this level of poverty. But wait, wouldn't wouldn't Shelton have been like a second gen, right? Because Shelton's around uh, the same age cohort, I, I suppose, as me and the two presenters here, right? Shelton's a, like, that's weird too. But like, I think he's this. He would have been second gen, right? And these level of horrors, right? By the time they came. I don't know. Or at least he was the same. He's the same age as all the second gens. If you even if he joined and his parents weren't in the cult, but I swear, like he, yeah, he's he's second gen. Like they just, I mean, again, I don't like the guy. Fuck Chris Shelton. But like, this is stupid. This is like why? What the fuck? Like, I don't believe this guy's story because it changes depending on who he's talking to. Building and guarantee you, Shelton didn't. It was a different thing, right? And yeah. then again, it transmuted. Like my friends that we he can't even say. Like I think Jamie Mustard, if I'm not mistaken, is a, a Latino, right? He can't even fucking say that it's different because they were white, which would make sense actually, because Scientology is just it's 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 it's. it's and there ain't much whiter than Scientology. So if he was like, hey, it was different for us kids because we were, we were Mexican or Latino, and these other people had a different experience because this organization is heavily white, like, okay, I could buy that. But he can't say that. I'm mostly because I think he's fucking, I think he's, conf he's doing a high enough level of confabulation either about his time in Scientology or his time in the ghetto. That like he can't do that. I can't understand that experience. That's a whole different hell that yeah. I would never pretend to understand. I would never pretend to understand the whole. Uh, but also Shelton wouldn't like that either. If somebody was saying their experience in the cult was different because uh, Shelton's white. He's not really a big believer in racism. I would never understand the, understand the desert compound. So part of my defense of those guys is... Um, the aftermath, Claire, Mark, Mike, you know, they, I don't really think they could conceive of what this thing was in terms of a slum, a tenement, neglect, uh, physical abuse, 
uh, child abuse, mm -hmm. medical abuse. Um, I mean, I had several, you know, probably three medical experiences because no one ever looked at my body that almost killed me. Uh, I don't think they, they, they what medical experiences almost killed you. See, like this is just offhand, like just said, like sort of as an aside, like we accept that he had like, and again, like his medical records are private. That's fine. I don't want fucking nobody go like you can't look into Jamie Mustard's medical records and that's good. But it also allows for space for him to just say he had three medical experiences that almost killed him. I don't even know what the fuck that means. Which is, again, good. I don't, I don't need to know about this motherfucker's medical history. I don't want to know anything. He did mention appendicitis, but I think he did. I don't know. You get an appendicitis. We all get an appendicitis. I don't know. We were living on these bare mattresses stripe mattresses with no sheets that never yeah. got washed um wait but they were you can't wash sheets that don't we, there were no sheets that the mattresses never you can't really wash a mattress it was like animals for years yeah. no sheets no washing no bathroom no brushing your teeth like i just don't think most people could conceive of that because by the time we got to big to the the mothership the big blue thing oh the mothership was in clear water uh <laughs> uh they it wasn't, it was still horrible, but it was nothing like that previous seven years, you know? Right. And, and so I, I, I just think that human beings can't do that, that most human beings can just not conceive of something that they haven't experienced firsthand. So I think that- I think that's I think not true, but it also like, I, I don't, I won't understand it like on a visceral level, but I, I, can, I can conceive of things that I haven't experienced. But the lack of empathy, just comes from a lack of not having been there and that's maybe just human nature what do you what do you think i think boy howdy have you said a lot that in, in and i'm gonna keep my answer just to scientology i think for the broad public in terms of being able to digest a tragedy trauma visually I would say a majority of people are like visual learners in that way, right? And, and Why I'll, would you say that a majority of people are visual learners? Well, like when the movie Schindler's List came out, I was a junior in high school and we were discussing at that time um, the Holocaust in Germany and across Europe. And the teachers without this movie had just come out, everyone. It was not already out, this premiering in theaters. They thought, this is a great idea to bring high school students to see this film because it will give you a, a visual. Um, like, hold on. I, I think I'm like five or six years older than she is. I think she's 40. Maybe I'm seven years. I don't think they took a lot of high school kids to watch Schindler's List. I could be wrong, but I don't think they did that. First of all, like the 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 movie was like it's a, it was not a documentary. Like it was a fiction based on fact. I don't think there's there's not a lot of not a lot of educational opportunities. Oh, oh, no, I, I could be wrong. Well, maybe I'm wrong. What that was like. And I will say as a 17-year-old watching that film, I was so impacted by that film by the and i'm sure it, it did the holocaust uh, tragedy justice but also i'm sure there was a lot left out right because it's a movie it was two and a half hours it could only show so many it was two and a half hours they couldn't have just they couldn't have displayed everything that happened in the holocaust yeah, fuck off. but i was forever impacted by that film now when people see leah's show they are impacted in a similar way or when we tell our okay the, the now 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 all right no no people no no actually scientology scientology's history of abuse in the united states is bad but no no it is actually not 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 akin to the extermination of uh, not only jews but of like queer people uh, communists uh, intellectuals who didn't agree with the, the regime. No, this is, we, we cannot, we cannot make this comparison, but I guess you can, Nora, go on. 
our stories here on the internet, on YouTube and other places, people are impacted in that same way because we are conveying that people can imagine these things and things like that. But the difference is, is that in Scientology, everybody saw the kids. The you guys were not hidden, okay? Everyone saw the filth, saw the unkemptness, saw the unbrushed hair, saw the tattered clothes, and the common... Fucking... Is it is it like Dickensian? Terry. We're looking for the word okay. Dickensian. Some Sea Org members. Was, pox, easels, like right. the headlights is out of control, oh, right? But the commentary was those kids are fucking downstat DBs. They look and smell disgusting. They weren't like, oh my God, what conditions are these children existing in? I didn't grow up like that. What is going on? We need to fix it. That was never a discussion amongst Sea Org members because I, I, and, I, and I don't, know, my, what, I, what I would say in defense of them. So the problem here, and I could be just like misunderstanding this, which is possible because it's a little bit hard to follow. Uh, aren't these people? Isn't she younger than him? Yeah, I don't know. Downstat DB. What is DB? I know what downstat means. It just means they're. Uh, less Hubbardian, I suppose. They're they're not as, as Scientol Scientology cool. I don't know what D B would be here. But even though I think that it's it's complicated, I think they need to, you know, for their own. But these you know, are first gen people, like you I said, know, I, who walked in, they, who they, had their own childhoods. I agree. Who grew I think up they, in they, things, yeah. and then they see children that may or may not even be theirs. Okay, and that are just now considered kids are either yours or someone else's dick bags. I will go with dick bags because okay. they dick can't bags. comb their own hair and they're four. Okay, so let me say this. I, I mean, right. they're, they're, they, uh, kids they are kind of dick bags. Be, I mean, I like it. Uh, no, I like other people's kids, but not like the way that don't clip that. I like I like my nephew, for example. I'm not terribly responsible for him, but I could buy him a gift and he'd be like, Shh, fuck, yeah. Well, he wouldn't say that. My mom, my sister would get mad and so would my mom. My dad would laugh. They need to empathize with yeah. our with these kids that now adults. The reason you know so many of these kids that I grew up degraded with being going crazy with rage is because it's so. This is but the problem here is this for this conversation to make sense. Nora would have to be older than him. Ones that are out that are supposed to be our allies mm -hmm. that are still being like, what's the big deal? Yeah, you know, and that yeah. is crazy making. I, I don't want to use the, the gaslighting word because I feel like it's overword, but it's it's crazy making. Gaslighting doesn't mean anything anymore. I think X ten eleven put up something on our wiki about words that don't mean anything. Gaslighting doesn't mean anything anymore. We need better words. I think crazy making is actually better than gaslighting. It's not the yeah. same, and I but I also in defense of them as much as I do think that if you can't be empathetic towards children, I don't know what your purpose is on the planet okay so i feel you uh, on that yes but i will say this i don't have a lot of empathy for kids because empathy is like being able to put yourself in their shoes and i don't really remember my childhood too much oh but boy i don't know boy how do you do i get mad if people are being mean to kids um i think that the processes that they underwent like the adults are being the, mean uh, to kids the the, the non-reactionary training to um the machine counseling has a way of severing you from your feelings. Busted term. Body. I've talked to Miriam a lot about this, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, meaning it turns off um, empathy, it causes you to deny your body and yeah. turn off and and and. Turn I would never body. deny my so body. These guys were being yeah. I would never deny it to the people on Grinder either. Hammered with this stuff, and and so I, my thing is, I feel two ways about it. A, I feel like. They're the worst people, these people that are supposed to be our allies that 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 came out that are the older generation that built this in the 70s are yeah. uh, the worst people in the world because they won't acknowledge that what happened to these other kids is being a special form of torture. But I also feel like uh, they were being conditioned not to do that so oh, it's, 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 it's a mess part of it, it, it's, it's a dual thing here but like for example okay i'm gonna call i'm not gonna make a joke about scissoring my own mother here for a second my mom when she was in the geo in the 70s and then got pregnant with me she saw then 
being at the two locations that the geo was at finally at a uh, celebrity center on the seventh floor there. Um, she saw the children of the Sea Org members. She was, you know, cause they, they were doing part of the nursery right there on the, and they were like, please, sir, can I have some more? <clears throat> this is the, 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 there's like a, a fucking, uh, uh, there's like a, there's like some, some shit about this that doesn't make sense the way that it's being told. And if these people weren't like assholes and ghouls and grifters and like, and they hadn't behaved the way that they had in the last couple of years, I'd just be like, you know what? These people are like, uh, didn't have complete information. They're trying to figure out what happened in a, in a situation where they didn't have access to information. But I'm less, I'm less inclined to feel that way because I, to a lesser extent, Nora, but particularly Jamie Mustard, I think is a grifter. Celebrity Center for a while. Geo right? is the Guardian's office, right. we now call the Office of Special Affairs, right. that handles all the legal liaisons for the movement, and, CO, yeah. and obviously CR so, is the private baby, right? I correct. Just wanted, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you for the de defining there. So okay. my mom had me in 1976, and she left. Um, oh, I was wrong. I thought Nora was young. Nora is almost, she's like a year older than me, or probably less than a year older than me fall of 1978 okay when i was like 18 months old right and she did so because she pulled a katie holmes at that time right what she does that mean the conditions that seer kids were in and was like not my daughter right and so removed me from the environment where i inevitably would have been put into the cadet org put into those situations because you know that's but the cadet did. org i mean See, that's you know. another term that I hate. Like, the, there was never, the Cadet Org never existed. It what? existed as a name. Right. But really, if you, but I hate it when we use these terms because A, it's language that they use to manipulate us. Mm -hmm. it's huh? It makes this the most, most sophisticated mind manipulation system in human history. Mm -hmm. So I don't like using. I'm pretty sure the Cadet Org was a thing, actually. Pretty sure that was real and it was for children the language but the reason i don't like the word the, the cadet org word is because it never really existed what it really was was a slum holding pen like the apollo training academy right it's a slum holy holding pen with a dirt playground yeah uh with broken tile and broken floors and sharp objects sticking out all over the place with one adult to 50 to 100 kids yeah. where we were warehoused or penned to grow and then eventually yeah. mm sign a bill your contract can be used for labor yeah. um when you say um, things like the cadet like, uh, i don't know about this because like i've heard other people describe their experience as a child in the in the scientology and i've never heard like this version of it this almost sounds like a this is like a very satanic panic version of being a kid in Scientology. That or like it's a real thing. It makes it sound like it was like, you know, an ROTC or something like that. Okay. <laughs> no, okay. it's not. It's <laughs> okay. not. But like, but my point was is that my mom saw those conditions and took me from them, right? And still did Scientology and did other things. Like, I, you know, I, I talked to my therapist about all that stuff, but I avoided or was saved from the horrors that you grew up in because my mom simply thought well that's an exception to all of scientology this is the first gen think right oh, it's yeah, not yeah. it's it that's just something that's not standard that's not correct it's i mean good if if she was removed from probably horrific yeah, I mean, but yeah. i'm gonna make but like i for my the problem i have here miss j is i don't know if this happened because he Previously, it was talking about his upbringing, uh, being poor in Los Angeles. And uh, I didn't say, it was on Benjamin Boyce's show. I didn't say shit about being in a cult. My little family, that I'm going to do it the right way. And this is the problem with the, the first gen think of you know or the old school crew like just get over it everybody experience bad stuff blah 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 and it's like it, it, it's it's not because to do that 
negates their responsibility in the overall conditions that you and Lara and yeah. Miriam and yeah. you know and all the other people and and Jenna grew up in and were shaped by but additionally I don't think Jenna Miscavige grew up in the conditions they're describing she was like part of the royal family of Scientology I'm not saying it wasn't rough for her or whatever but I think she probably had a, a privilege that wasn't afforded to uh, other children. It's like it was an ongoing problem in the C organization until it flapped so badly in the public arena that David Miscavige was like, no more kids. We're just canceling the whole thing just to cover it. But now you're jumping, now you're jumping way forward in time, right? Like the fucking time traveling now. This was supposed to be in like the 80s and now you're jumping way forward in time to when uh, supposedly David Miscavige said no more kids in the Sea Org. Like the, 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 the timeline isn't making any sense here. And that would be fine if Jamie Mustard wasn't here trying to get a bunch of people who've experienced the trauma of having grown up in a cult to spend $5,000 for some unproven treatment. I know we've gotten off of that in the video we're watching, but that's what's happening here. All this, all the inconsistencies and in all this would be fine, right? Like, okay, well, you were kids, like the things that the timeline's a little murky. This is an organization that, uh, that thrives on secrecy. All that, all that would be fine, except that ja Jamie Mustard here selling a product. Not to yeah, be like, I, we need or a service. I know, but here's it's, a whole it's, bunch of money. Here's an apartment. I know, here's I know, a real yeah. education. Or, how about I didn't do any of that. Yeah. You know. you know, what's so rough about it is like when you read Man's Search for Meeting by Viktor Frankl, and he talks about these bull guards that were the Jews that were meant to regulate the other Jews. Right. Or it, during slavery, chattel slavery in the South, the kind of special slaves that were meant to run the other slaves had reputations mm -hmm. of being crueler than the... Yes than the plantation owners or the white, you know. Yeah, dude. In fact, I just try to not, I try to say Jewish folks. <laughs> Overseers or yeah. crueler than the Nazi guards. And so it's a really messed up situation these guys are in because... Oh, boy, howdy. Everything here is messed up. Oh, victims. You know, I don't know that these guys... Like, I don't know that what, what... what Listen, what what it does to a human... Say you're... Um, I don't know how Shelton grew up or... or, or I mean, I know a little bit about uh, the Australian from his book, but like... Right. I don't know how much... But I would say this is much more likely for Chris, you know... How much are your parents when you're five years old off going off and doing the, the thing saying, hey, you know, I wish we could spend more time together, but I got a planet to save. <laughs> okay, yeah. Because if yeah. you want to if you're going to make a crit save the world omelet, you're going to have to crack a few skulls. OK, yeah, yeah, this is so that second kind of stuff. You got to make an omelet. You got to crack a few skulls. Didn't grow up within the inner core like uh, I think could be very severe. Oh and, yeah. Yeah. And so, but so it's just, I don't it's just know. different. You know what I mean? Because the conditions of the house you grew up in are very different than the house I grew up in. Right. But yeah. I have my own trauma. From so they're, 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 they're like assuming that any of this, like, okay, the assuming that any of this is true, they're not going to like bring up the fact that Scientology white as fuck. And uh, Jamie mustard appears to be Latino and maybe non-whites in Scientology were treated a little differently or a lot differently than whites in Scientology were treated because you know why? Ooh, politics. We don't want to talk about politics. Associated with a lot of things that, again, that's conversations for my therapist, but, or maybe one day I'll write a fancy book. I don't know. But you know, like those things, um, happened to me privately whereas your trauma and other people who were born into the sea organization conditions that happened on a public scale because you were always in that group even though it was like a private little cult it was still public do you know what i mean like it's not it, it wasn't hidden in your home because you guys were all experiencing it together in these gigantic rooms it's right like that, it was like, it's like that Motown, motown song 
It was a pressure cooker across yes. 110. Which Motown song? I bet you're talking about a good song. That's yeah. what I would say. There it was go. a hell of a tester. But now, you know, uh, yeah. I, well, I okay. know you have to go because we have a no, tight I got, schedule. No, I, got a, I got another 30 minutes. Okay. Well, we have a lot of comments. I want to get to those. Uh oh. Oh, comments from her chat. Okay. So let me. From the all white choir in Norris chat. I'll be back. I got to pee. I got to pour another drink. Say one thing before I, yeah, to I was going to say final words before we get to the comments. Okay. So, Miss J, I, I ain't buying his shit. I'm not saying that he didn't grow up in a cult, but also it couldn't, I don't know, based on what he said before in other interviews and stuff, he never brings it up. I don't know. I'm like real fucking skeptical about all this. Real skeptical because this happened a long time ago. I don't know. Oh, no. But I got to pee. Before we get to the comments, um, anything new in your life, Nora? Yes. Anything you want to share with anybody? <laughs> well, okay, guys. So we're talking about these uh, amazing shots. I have uh, gotten both vampire bites here on uh, my... That's what I jokingly call it because you get like two... Ding, ding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, on the on the side and when it's healing it does look like you've you've seen count dracula um and you guys may have noticed over the past month or so uh, a difference in my demeanor um but uh you know i uh, i will say this the very briefly because we do have some great comments to get to but um the difference for me is, is much like miriam said and much how you described it like being able to turn off permanently um that constant noise the constant fear the constant just agitation and anxiety and be able to be truly present in whatever moment i'm in um has been like a a, a fucking miracle but also like you guys have seen a couple like uh for example i've done okay this the 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 live i just did by myself where i i you know uh served Chris Shelton, his panties on a platter. I would normally have done something like that and then been severely agitated. Like I would have to go take a nap. Like physically, it would have hurt me and hurt my mind and, and made me question, why am I talking about any of this stuff, right? I literally finished that live, jumped in a car, went and picked up my son, dropped him off at his potluck party, and then came back and I was like, hmm, you know, like, to, as they say in Scientology, new unit of time. <laughs> like, it was just like, as if that is done, it's not on me like a backpack of, of trauma, you know, uh, re-triggering. It's just done. And it is, um, it's really beautiful. It's really something that is changing day by day. Um, for me, like I'm noticing different things every day and, uh, coming up on Monday, just to shout it out, I'm going to be having a conversation with, uh, Ree from Ree's connecting about, uh, the shots and our, and our mutual experience. Yeah, I mean, so the last thing I wanted to do when I did, when I talked about it, I did, it is what got me out of the shadows. I wanted this treatment for the kids that I grew up with and I yeah. wanted it for all my it's on a so like diet much how you described it like being able to turn off permanently have i rewinded it enough? that constant noise the constant fear the constant just agitation and anxiety we'll say okay, so we have your I was like 18 months old, right? And she did so because more she pulled a Katie Holmes at that time, right? She saw the conditions that Seward kids were in and was like, not my daughter, right? And so removed me from the environment where I inevitably would have been put into the cadet org. Manipulation with broken tile and broken floors and sharp. That's an exception to all experience bad stuff, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, it, it, it's, it's not until or to that, right. or it's during slavery than the Nazi guards. And so it's a really messed up situation these guys are in because they're also victims. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, so that kind of stuff, even for a public child or child, I'll meet the C organization, that group, even it, it, um, but anything new in your life, Nora? Uh, Here's about when I left. I left all of you. I left you alone with these weirdos. But, uh, you know, uh, I will say this the very briefly, cause we do have some great comments to get to, but, um, the difference for me is much like Miriam said and much how you described it, like being able to turn off permanently um, that constant noise. Yeah, public, so people who don't know the lingo, a public Scientologist is somebody who uh, doesn't necessarily, it's like you just go take the fucking weird classes and hold the fucking cans and give them money. You're not like intimately involved in the running of the organization. You're not, you're not employed. Employed is a weird word, but you're not. Yeah. You have a job and you fucking hopefully are able to do things outside of the cult and you're, yeah, you're, you're not, your, your entire life is not controlled by the cult of Scientology. That's what a public means. And that's what most Scientologists are, are public Scientologists constant fear the constant just agitation and anxiety and be able to be truly present in whatever moment i'm in um has been like a a, a fucking miracle but also like you guys have seen a couple like uh for example i've done okay this the 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 live i just did by myself where i i you know uh served chris shelton his panties on a platter I, but that's easy. Chris Shelton's like a like he's he's a bullyable individual, and we haven't we haven't bullied him. We could, but we have not. He actually tried to cry bully me once, and it didn't didn't work so well for him. Would normally have done something like that, and then been severely agitated. Like I would have to go take a nap. Like physically, it would have hurt me and hurt my mind and and made me question why am i talking about any of this stuff right i literally finished that live jumped in a car went and picked up my son dropped him off at his potluck party so the way that you would do this if you weren't in some kind of weird parasocial relationship or with your audience or whatever you'd be like i had to end the, the fucking live because i had shit to do and then came back and i was like all right we got to go back fuck it you're talking about vampire shots. I've uh, gotten both vampires a lot of comments. I want to get to those. Here we go. So let me say one thing before. Yeah, we get I was going to say final words before we get to the comments. Okay, final words before we get to the comments. Um, anything new in your life, Nora? Yes. Anything you want to share with anybody? <laughs> oh, this is oh, this is him uh, cueing her to say that she got the fucking treatment. Uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you tried to. I'm, I know, I know. I'm, I'm here for you, baby. I'm here for you. Well, okay, guys. So we're talking. I am but a humble talk show. Okay. I am but a talk show host. Talk about these uh, amazing shots. I have uh, gotten both vampire bites here on uh, my. That's what I jokingly call it. But isn't one side for the children and one. Oh, never mind. So you get like two ding ding <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, on the on the side. And when it's healing, it does look like you've you've seen Count Dracula. Um, and you guys may have noticed over the past month or so uh, a difference in my demeanor. Um, no. No, actually. Incorrect. But, uh, you know, uh, I will say this. The Wasn't it less than a month ago that she was like yelling at the Liam, the the fucking. <laughs> The fucking PTS Discord mod. Very briefly, because we do have some great comments to get to. But um, the difference for me is, is much like Miriam said and much how you described it. Like being able to turn off permanently um, that constant noise, the constant fear, the constant just... Mm, plus, this is fucking... You, you, that, that, this is something she's convinced herself of, I think. And now she's a victim of this shit. Fuck! Now she's a victim of this grift. You think they gave it to her for free? I think not. ...tation and anxiety and be able to be truly present in whatever moment I'm in um, has been like a, a, a fucking miracle, but also like you guys have seen a couple, like, uh, for example, I've done, okay. This, the, the, the live I just did by myself where I, I, you know, uh, served Chris Shelton, his panties on a platter. 
So I would, I, I've said very disparaging things about Chris Shelton's character. Um, I wouldn't use like uh, hetero. I guess this is like like hetero misogyny or whatever. I wouldn't. I would never talk about him in that way. It's uh, makes me look bad, and it's just not like that. Doesn't represent the values that we we try to uh, fucking put out there around here. I would never do this. Uh, hetero misogyny. I don't know what the word is. It's like um. I would. I don't. I don't know if he wants to wear panties. That's up to him. I would normally have done something like that and then been severely agitated. Like I would have to go take a nap. Like physically, it would have hurt me and hurt my mind. I've said negative things about Chris Shelton and I never needed a nap afterwards. And, and made me question, why am I talking about any of this stuff, right? I literally finished that live, jumped in a car, went and picked up my son, dropped him off at his potluck party, and then came back and I was like, hmm, you know, like- That's a great. As they say in Scientology, new unit of time. <laughs> like, it was just like, as if- Naps aren't just for little kids and old people. That is done, it's not on me. Like Wait a, a minute, don't in Spain and France and shit, don't they have like a, isn't napping part of their culture? Like in Southern Europe, it's a siesta? of of trauma you know uh re-triggering it's just done and it is um it's really beautiful it's really something that is changing day by day um for me like i'm noticing different things every day and uh coming up on monday just to shout it out i'm going to be having a conversation with uh re from re's connecting about uh the shots and our Oh no. And our mutual experience. Yeah, I mean, so the last just... thing I wanted to do when I did, when I talked about it, I did, it is what got me out of the shadows. I wanted this treatment for the kids that I grew up with. Out of the shadows, you say. And I yeah. wanted it for all middle class people. Kindergarten. I want this treatment for all middle class people. Excuse me? Hold on. When I did when I talked about it, I did. It is what got me out of the shadows. I wanted this treatment for the kids that I grew up with, and I yeah. wanted it for all middle class people, kindergarten teachers, plumbers, yoga instructors, the people that the people that are doing yoga, yoga instructor. Yoga. Okay, yoga instructors. No problem with yoga, by the way. I mean, it's a little basic, but that's like the fault of like places like Los Angeles, probably like places I even like in Los Angeles, like. Um, like Santa Monica, that's 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 the fault of those places. But it's it's interesting that he mentioned yoga instructors, <laughs> right? There's a uh, I'm starting to uh, uh oh I I know who his target audience is. Don't forget to follow us on social media for beautiful food and inspiration. Hang on, uh, but um, and I will say this: Jamie has encouraged me, obviously, to get this procedure. But all oh, you don't say also been open to every question that i've had about it every doubt every whatever and has respected i backed out but you also yeah, yeah. what are your doubts you've respected yeah. my space and time and me considering it and researching it and asking questions and talking to people and you never been like well i wrote a book so you should just listen to me right like, that's <laughs> the never last thing, all the data in the book <laughs> obviously these guys that are criticizing <laughs> haven't read the book because the book is full of data but i don't have to wait no 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 no, no. this is a bullshit this is a, you know how jordan peterson fans are like oh you haven't watched enough of his content to criticize him he's doing this right here I don't have to read his book to be skeptical of the medical claims that he's making. He's making like pretty strong claims about medical science. I don't have to read his book. I can listen to his claims and not believe his claims because what is it? That fucking that video, that Innuendo Studios video. Always a bigger fish. It's a good video by Innuendo Studios. It's about Gamergate, but it's this, this this strategy here where there's always a bigger fish. All right. Well, now I've like a, I've watched like five. Uh, this will be like the third interview of him as we tried to watch. Always a bigger fish. Now I got to fucking read his book. Now I read his book. Oh, now you got to read Doctor Lipov's fucking 
whatever. They're always a bigger fish when you go after somebody. If you're trying to go after somebody for grifting, there's just always a bigger fish. I can't, the, the fucking Innuendo Studios video does such a better job of explaining it than I do. And again, it isn't even about this, but the concept from it is important. It's this idea that no matter, no matter what you're doing, your criticism just needs to include this other piece of information over here. Otherwise it's like invalid. It's the, all. it's the, it's always a bigger fish. It's such a smart video. And I think it's like less than 20 minutes. I can't recommend it highly enough because it's like what he's, he's doing the, the always a bigger fish right here. Yeah. Right. But, um, no, but what know, my, my point is, is that you're not just like, I I'm the authority because I wrote that this is the book. Please get it on Amazon. The links in there for a hundred times. But, uh, and I listen, pirate the book, fuck it, get it for free. And I will promote this book everywhere because it's beautiful and it is something that can really. Ooh, what are the odds that Nora's read the whole book? You think she read the book? And, and like you said earlier, you, you get this. It's not now I have. Yeah, no dude. Problem. Yo, that's such a good video. Turns off the hor it turns off the horror it, movie. And now when right. I go to talk to my therapist, I'm not then also re-triggered for an yeah. entire rest of the day yeah. sitting in the trauma because I, and I said this to you at, at the beginning. Ooh, I, I don't, I wonder what her there. I, even odds that her therapist don't know about the shots. Even odds that her therapist don't know about the shots because mental health professionals, they're, if she's seeing like, and I, I have no reason to believe that she's not seeing like a qualified mental health professional. Mental health professionals are fucking skeptics. They have to be. Otherwise, they'd just be telling you to eat the magic beans. It's it is turned down. It's insane Reach the in. difference between my therapy before the shots and my therapy now. Like at the beginning of the year, I had a mental crisis, guys, and I reached out to professionals. I called the numbers you're supposed to call, and I met with a psychiatrist who I love, and I got into an intensive outpatient um, program and a group and weekly. So I was seeing like therapists five days a week. And I will tell you, doing that program was so intense and so true. And it'd still be fucking hypnotizing you if they weren't. That's a good fucking point, stealthy Fed agent. Also, if somebody else said that, you might delete right, that. On a daily basis. Mm, fucking like, tyrant. I like I'd be having some problem with something, and then the title of the the lesson for the day would be like exactly the thing that I was going through. And I was like, these fuckers, like, you know, and I was just angry. But this is like this some post hoc reasoning, like, oh God. This is so horrible. Now Nora is a victim of this shit. And I don't like Nora. I'm like in a position like I've had to fucking defend Chris Shelton, who I don't like. And now I'm fucking I feel like protective of Nora now because she done got grifted. Nora got grifted. What's happening here? And I'm just guessing. But what's happening here is that the, the, the other interventions she's doing are, are working right it, it she's seeing a therapist it's good for all of us even if you think that your your shit's all together if you got the money go, go, go see a therapist a couple times a year couldn't hurt uh maybe she's medicated i don't know it's none of my business but all these things they may be working for her and she may be more calm more present in in a multiple uh, multitude of ways because she's like dealing with whatever it is that she's dealing with and now this guy comes along, charges her $5,000 a shot, two shots. Is it $5,000? Let's say it's $5,000. Maybe she got a deal. Maybe she got it for forty-seven fifty because she's fucking in the affiliate program or whatever. Now she's going to attribute all this to the fucking shots. Now she's a victim. But the, what's going to happen next is now she, if she keeps going down this road and telling other people to take the shot, she's going to move from victim to perpetrator. She's going to be the one perpetrating this shit on other people now. And she's not even going to know what happened to her. I said, I, I feel like now I'd love to do that program again because it really was helpful and I learned a lot. Oh, yep. Yep. Here we go. I got to do it again. Does she mean the fucking mental health program or does she mean the shots? 
but I feel like I would get so much more out of it now because the data in those programs and in therapy is so valuable when you cannot hear it because the internal noise is just so this is fucking disgusting this is so like listen I don't like Nora and it's well fucking documented that I don't like like no Chris Shelton this shit is fucking disgusting. What's happening at Jamie Mustard is fucking disgusting. This is so bad. She's all the all the work of all the people. I don't know if she's in therapy. That's fucking none of my business. Maybe she's lying about therapy or if she's on Medicaid. Maybe she's lying about all that. But I'm going to take her at her word that she's been like doing talk therapy and whatever, whatever it is that she's been doing. Now she's like attributing all the fucking all the shit from all the hard work, all the fucking shit that she's actually done for herself. If in fact that's the case. And all the fucking people, like the mental health professionals or whatever, who have been helping her, like, work through whatever the fuck it is. I don't know. It's none of my business again. But now she's attributing it to the sh- fucking shots. Oh, this is... Ooh, 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 we're getting close. We're getting... We're, I don't get mad. I don't get mad that much on... Oh, I'm getting mad, though. I'm getting mad now, actually. This is fucking... I'm, I'm starting to get mad now. I don't like this. I don't like getting mad on stream, but now I'm starting to get mad. Now I'm starting to get mad. Because, like, I don't want to... I don't want to, like, overstep my ability to, like, under... Like, I don't want to overstep anything, but Nora is a troubled person. Uh, that's not even right. I shouldn't say that because I don't know much about Nora, but if she's finding peace in this world after whatever it is that happened to her it's i it's probably primarily through her own work and the work of the people like like professionals who have been like helping her work through whatever it is now this motherfucker over here is like telling her it's because of the sh- here take the shot you'll be better oh i'm i get mad at this shit this is like why this shit is harmful actually This is why this shit is bad, and this is why we talk about this shit. Now, instead of, like, now, instead of, like, being proud of the progress she's made, she's like, oh, it was the shots. Oh, I'm, I fuck, oh, 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 this is where, like, this is where the, 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 what are they, DC-8s (laughs) from Scientology? This is where the rubber meets the road when the DC eight lands, right? Like this is where the fucking harm is done. Loud that you get yeah, like you get like one percent. You get like one percent. Yeah, your nervous system's on red. You can't experience what's going on around you. Can yeah. I have the final word before we go to questions? Based yes, please. On, you trigger, I want to say this um, uh, based on what you just said. I'm gonna I want to read um, from the the the. Uh, Stephen Porges, his his in what he said about the book, and about the tre- what he says about the treatment. Mm-hmm. Um, it says <clears throat> like who's that? Again, these are all individuals or whatever. Like the, the fucking the other thing. This is all individuals. This is like the fucking hero worship shit we talk about too. Who the fuck is Stephen Porges? Stephen Porridge. Um, and then uh, because it made you made me think of it when you were kind of talking about um, your personal narrative. And then we yeah. can go into things. So first of all, the last thing, I, right before I read this, I you just gave, Nora just gave this motherfucker a testimonial to tell to some other person, oh no, he's going to like talk to like some fucking podcast about people who used to be homeless or some shit. And he's going to use her. He's going to be like, I know a former cult member. Oh fuck. If the fucking cycle of the grift continues here. I just want to say this. I never expected when I did this, I just wanted to get the kids I grew up with treatment and kind of put it out there. Yeah. I didn't think I was going to become the shot guy. To the <laughs> shot. You know, like, like, he's out there. He's, he's hawking the shots. You know, like, like the but you are actually, and I'm fucking, I'm, I'm far more angry than I thought I would be. I don't like freak out on the fuck. Uh, yeah. I don't freak out. Last time I got like, last time I freaked out on stream, I think was 
my fucking Andrew Gold video about Doug Kramer. But I I, I don't know if freak out on stream, but I'm I'm angry now. And I'm angry on behalf of Nora, who I don't like. Vegetable like, chopper yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, like, and like there'd be all these like feeds on Discord and Reddit. There's Jamie Mustard with the shots. You know, oh like, my god. You know, like, and I just like picture of me with a giant syringe. Like I, I did not expect that it's happened. Uh yeah. what are the odds this guy's an anti-vaxxer? <laughs> the only shots that are good are the ones that we put directly into your spine. I can't, but this is what Steven says. In the Invisible Machine, Lipov and Mustard rewrite the recovery narrative for many who have experienced personal disruptions and life compromises. Through personal stories, we learn that traumatic experiences may... Yeah, but through personal stories, we learn very little. I know it's... I know people don't want to hear this, but through personal stories, we learn very little. I don't want you to discount, like, when your friends are telling you about the things that happen to them, but those are your friends. How many of you make your medical decisions based on what your friends told you over a beer? Lock the nervous system into a chronic state of defense and fight or flight behaviors while compromising feelings of safety and sociality. The Lipov treatment gives permission to retune, enabling one to return to sociality, playfulness, and social connection. I would love for the Australian and uh, Mr. Yeah. Shelton to get, to get this. I, I, uh, and, listen, and then I, come out and tell me I'm full of it. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, but you the, neither. Okay. First of all, the Australian, that's Mike Rinder. Um, I think Mike Rinder, and I don't know for sure. I think Mike Rinder might be dying. I don't know. He might be. And then Mr. Shelton, not the right person to address your claims. Not the right person. Just not the right person. This guy right now is clout chasing. Wants Mike Rinder to argue with him. Wants Chris Shelton to argue with him. I think it's a uh, either of those is a bad idea. Mike Rinder, I think he's probably really sick. I don't know. But I think Mike Rinder is probably very ill. And then Chris Shelton is not equipped to deal with a grifter. They should absolutely get it so that they can start dealing with. Wait, they should get the shot? Hold on. Mike Rinder, I think, has cancer that I think. And again, we don't know that much about it because it's n not our business. But I, my, my understanding is this may be terminal. And again, I don't know that much. He's not my friend. I don't know Mike, but I think, I think his cancer may be terminal. Ah, uh, you know what? Why not take five grand from a dying man? Actually, fuck it. Get get your five grand. Get your commission on that five grand. You fucking asshole. Mr. Yeah. Shelton, to get to get this. I, I uh, listen, and, and I, then come out and tell me I'm full of it. Yeah. Okay. I think I mean, they should absolutely get it so that they can start dealing with their yeah. trauma. But again, I'm done. Never wanted to be the shot guy. You know, like it's, like it's, just, it's crazy. This is fucking disgusting. This is fucking dis. There's a man who may be dying. I don't know, and I again want to make sure that that we're pretty clear on this. Mike Render deserves his privacy. I don't know what's happening. Hopefully, he gets better. I don't want him to die. I don't know that much about him, uh, but I'd like to, uh, hopefully he gets better. Hopefully he's being treated. But what if he is dying? Now this motherfucker wants to pull $5,000 out of him for a shot. Like this, the Jamie no. mustard of the shots, you know, like, yeah. but okay. You're right, so I'll much more it. than that though, Jamie. You're so much more chin. than that. I'll take it on the chin. All right, um, let's all let's right. do these. We're gonna do. Oh my goodness, Clearwater Chad. All right, here we go. Thank you for the super sticker. Uh, smiling face with sunglasses. Thank you, uh, Brittany Van Brakel. Uh, my heart just exploded into tinier hearts. I love Jamie. That's because you took the shot. All right, there's a lot of love for you in these comments here, Jamie. Okay, you. Michelle Thank Biker. You. She says, Jamie, I want to have uh, the best doctor. So I'd like to talk to you about the Portland Clinic. Montana's doctors are iffy 
So yeah, there. Uh, and uh, if you want to reach out, Jamie, do you have an email or something that Instagram. people? Can... Jamie, Instagram, Jamie, J A M I E underscore M U S T A R D on Insta. I'm normally really good at getting back to people right away. I've been on a no email address. Like deadline for the last. Uh... Ooh, ooh. I'm not kidding. I think they just suggested to us that a man who may be dying should pay $5,000 for some shot that's supposed to stop a PTSD. I think that's what he just said. I don't give a fuck if they said Chris Shelton should get the shot. I don't know. Fucking whatever. Fucking put whatever into Chris Shelton's neck you want, I guess. There's a man who I think may be dying. Uh, a few weeks. Jamie works, that, that, guys. <laughs> yeah, that ends in the next few days. So. Jamie works. That's why he doesn't have an email address that we can call. He could just you could just uh, DM me on Insta. Back to you. Let me let quickly. me find your. Don't forget to follow us on social media for beautiful food and inspiration. Instagram right here. Let me just. Um, yeah. Let me All find right. you. And so let's go to the next comment here while I'm finding you on Insta. Okay, one second. Boom. Kraken Studio says, uh, oh. here we go. The shame behind our stories is terrifying to share, but the true healing happens when we open up as it allows somebody else to realize they are not alone. Yeah, that is and that incredible, endor the, this guy that endorses the work that I just said, I want to say who he is, Stephen W. Porges, PhD, author of Polyvagal Theory, founder and director of the Traumatic Stress Research Consortium at the Kinsey Institute. This guy is one of the most esteemed trauma doctors in i bet this person has an email address jamie like what do you mean dm me on instagram in the world he mm -hmm. operates only off of data yeah. okay the book if you read the book it's not a book of opinions where jamie comes and talks about the shots it's yeah. it's got a lot of research and data in it uh so um yeah and if yeah. you you know you, you feel if you can't afford it get it at the library okay uh, it's in an audiobook yeah. too for those yeah. for those peeps yeah. who like audiobooks, okay? Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, Mighty, uh, Mighty Unicorn says, I could not be more excited. Two of my favorite people. Thank you for this super chat. I appreciate you. Thank you. Reconnecting says, shame within childhood trauma can be deadly. Thank you, Jamie and Eugene. You've totally changed my life. Ooh, she's terrifying. Re is terrifying. Reconnecting, terrifying. Life. Kraken Studio says Jamie was trafficked literally day one. Oh, really? Really? They do hunger games down there. They do adoption and they eat people in your life. I would. I they would. don't. You know, the funny, they didn't have, you know, the, the trafficking laws that would have protected me mm -hmm. did not come into existence until the early 2000s. Yeah. It's you crazy. Know, so, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. many things have progressed. Yeah. Kellyanne Silva wants to know, Jamie, do you remember? Oh, uh, yeah. He's going to say he does and that you need the shots. Me and my mom, Nunny. Remember Art tells at the Shangri Lodge? I remember Kellyanne Silva. Yes. All right. There you Kelly, go, re Kelly. Kelly. Kelly, reach out to me. I put Jamie's uh, I put Jamie's Insta in the chat. I'll put it in again later. But reach out on Instagram, Kelly. Kelly. Are you fucking kidding me? Antoinette, and oh, what am I reading? Annette Genoy. Um, I just ordered Jamie Mustard's book for my friend who has PTSD from being in the service. I hope he reads it and reach and reaching out and get help. He can't hold a job because of it. I would say PTSI, PTSI, PTS, PTSI. But I would say Injury. also yes. uh, Annette uh, it, it will uh, get the shots. Five, five grand, five grand. It's just five grand. What's five grand? Definitely help him to start healing, to start the healing process. The great process thing about so the book is even if you don't read, even if you don't get read the procedure and you get the book from the library, I think by the time you finish that book you'll at least know it's biological so even if you never get the treatment i think taking the stigma away that you might be crazy uh is but like i don't like i don't like that like nobody thinks people like i would never use like use the word crazy to describe somebody with post-traumatic stress for people even if they don't want to go get the treatment so get it from the library if you can't afford it and uh just 
and don't live with the stigma of having a disorder when you have a biological injury. Okay. Yeah. All right. uh, Michelle wants to know how old you are, Jamie. I'm not going to say. I'm 19. <laughs> I'm like Borat. He's oh, this is easy. Uh, I think Jamie Mustard probably around my age. Five. I, if I tell you how old I am, then it's going to be like a whole thing because people are going to be thinking I'm drinking like rat, you know, like, you know, bu- bunny Stop rabbit blood or something. It. Yeah, I'm like Stop Benjamin it. Buttons. I'm like Benjamin Buttons. Yeah. But no, we all, because we all, none of us, that's one thing about us. I wonder what it is. Yeah. Must be He's like my age, right? Water in the 70s yeah, I mean, because we look great. Good. You have an age. Surge looks like he's, you know, eighteen. Right. right? So yeah. So yeah. so you know, I don't. If we start revealing our ages, then people are going to think that we made a pact. Uh, this we could find this. I don't. I'm not encouraging anybody to go find this guy's birthday. We can find out how old this guy is. <laughs> Well, shh, Jamie, Jamie, okay. don't talk okay. about the Illuminati here. Okay, so Robert Sandy Beach, uh, if you have nothing nice to say, say it to my face in person. Hey, <laughs> Matt, oh, Robert Sandy Beach gonna punch you, and then like maybe you need a shot because you got post traumatic stress disorder. With anybody that's oh, kind yeah. of walking in the recesses of Discord or or Reddit, reach out. Talk, Jamie's on it. Oh yeah. Walking in the recesses of Discord or, or Reddit. Reach out. Jamie's on Instagram. Um, and, and Nora, if Nora would commit to it, um, yeah. I'm open to do a public we'll do conversation it. with anybody. The more cynical, On this the software, better. I can host 50 people at once. Okay. So let's the more do it. Cynical, let's... The, anybody that wants to talk about it in person, the more yeah. cynical, the better. Your friend, I'm your Huckleberry. Your friend, I'm your Huckleberry. You don't want that, though. I'm your Huckleberry. Let's go. Yeah. I'm happy to come on and have a conversation. And let's do who knows, it. You know, um, uh, yeah, I'm a, you know, come on and knock me. So out. also with Nora as the host, it becomes two against one, right? If somebody doesn't believe what, what he's saying, be it me or anyone else. If somebody's not buying this, Nora would yell at them or me. I mean, I'm here for it. Whatever. Fuck fucking. Yes. I, I, I'm, we might, well, I wouldn't reach out to him. Might have the media wench reach out to him. She's good at this. Um, but I don't know, like Nora is the host. It would be two against one, but that's fun too, actually. You're around. Yeah. Okay. Mountaintop says, thank God for the new class classification of PTSD. I instead of PTSD because it is not a disorder. It is an injury. Uh, Diana Santos. But what if it's chronic? Is someone re injuring themselves? Now, Diana. Well, that's great. You need more shots. Actually, I have a question about your question. Are you talking about like if they have chronic like all those things are, are chronic, right? Um, so getting the shots, right? Um, it is the opposite of that, I would say. What? Um, but if you're if you're asking if because somebody has chronic PTSI, are they doing it? Um, I would say no, it's because it's a physical injury. Right. And that's why you have to address the. But I will say this, yeah. And, and, and you can re-traumatize yourself if you go get this treatment, but you're you're living in the allostatic or toxic stress load uh, that uh, you lived in before. You'll re-traumatize yourself. There's all oh, great. Five thousand dollars more for us an epigenetic component if you mm-hmm. come from a long history of trauma this thing trips easier and then it trips back easier so there's all sorts of factors it's a spectrum it's not some people have this injury worse than others i found that the people that i grew up with have the most severe conditions that are very similar to kids like i've met i've interviewed people that have rwandan genocide survivors i've interviewed uh people uh Rwanda, you, know, you didn't interview people that survived the Rwanda genocide. Fuck out of here. <laughs> I've interviewed. Like, I looked for this guy. This guy doesn't have a place where you can, he's, he keeps talking about how he talked to all these people or interviewed all these people. He doesn't have a place where you can view any of this. Um, uh, uh, people in prison that grew up in the most horrible projects that have been convicted of murder. I've interviewed, and I found that, and, and I've also interviewed his soldiers that have undergone extreme conditions as well as uh, child uh, sexual trafficking victims. Right, if it comes back, that doesn't mean it didn't work. You just do it again, baby. Do it again. Five grand, motherfucker. Extreme trauma you can imagine. And I would say on this spectrum, the kids that I grew up with are par with these extremes. 
Yeah. I'm just telling you what I've seen. No, 100%. And then, all right, one more drink, and then we got to start thinking about what yeah, to do next. Uh, uh, Why do people keep giving her money? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Jamie, for sharing your shame story. It changed my recovery from disordered to an injury. Doctors in Melbourne, Australia, love the book. DSR is a game changer in healing. I'm planning a book club using your book. Thank you. Invite me to talk, and I'll come talk. For free? I don't think it's for, for free. Hey, fun. got re. That's a that's a promise right there. Yeah, that is Do a it. promise. Do it. Yeah. Uh, Lysandia Grokling. Uh, nor the way you say the aftermath foundation is like Natalie saying the bridge to total freedom. It <laughs> yeah. you know, it's funny. I, I just, I'll be back. I need one more drink. I don't know what we're doing tonight. What do we want to do? Does everybody want to dance? You want to play marbles on stream? Like, cause after this is over, I can't possibly do any more brain rot. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's the other thing is like a disorder could be the result of an injury. Oh, this is fucking, this is so fucking annoying. Those people, this, oh. Like, it, it's just a name. Uh, what, what, the name isn't what it is. This Correct. Because called a foundation, whether it's the SPTV Foundation, the Aftermath, <sighs> it's the people that make it up right. and what they believe. That's what it actually is. Yeah. So I, the term, so I, yeah, the term always, uh, it always sounds so illustrious, the Aftermath Foundation. Hey, welcome to the Aftermath Foundation. And exactly. it's like, again, like, I, I want them to keep helping people. And any time any of those people uh, want to reach out and, you know, break bread and put it to rest and yeah. try to work together, I'm down to do it. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, I'm not against them. I'm for myself. And what I mean that when I say I'm for myself is, <laughs> We're not allowed to talk about our stories because it's negative about the movement. Right. Okay? And so with that, and what I've learned in life, and this is one, of the, is one of the most profound things I've ever learned. And I had somebody, somebody had to tell it to me 10 times over 10 years before I believed it. And is that you, unless you master your story, you cannot master your life. There's a group out here where I work called, or live called Rogue Pack, where they teach inner city kids to master their story because then they can best, and they study Shakespeare so that they can then master their life. Yeah. And so when you're not allowed to tell your story, you're kind of stuck in this state of suspended animation because you have to deny that what happened to you happened to you to protect this movement. Right. So when I say I'm for myself, I'm for being honest about, you know, or at least saying what happened, at least to myself, so that I can mass, you know, hopefully move on and not be stuck in it until I die. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, I feel I, like well, you yeah, a lot of us, human, yeah, a lot of us as human beings is like we finally figure out our childhood when we're eighty and then we die. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, it's like so, on our deathbed. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm trying to not do that. I'm trying to like, you know, I want to, I want to understand what happened to me. Yeah, and, that, and I, that's where I think uh, the Australian can be so helpful because he has so much information about. Yeah kind of what happened. It's not about what's illegal, what's not illegal. But also I understand that, you know, he's got his trauma and he's he's been bashed around and he's done, you know, it's just, a, it's, it's, it's a mess. It is. It's a, it's a cesspool. It's maggots. It's the darkest thing that I've ever seen. Yeah. It's dark. Yeah. Maybe not that I've ever seen, but it's No, dark. I know. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Okay. It's, uh, yeah. Bambina Vivacci says, why is a disorder linked to the idea of being crazy and an injury would not be? In the field, we don't think of people being crazy when diagnosing. We are not declaring anyone crazy. I'm just talking about the realities of the world. When you tell yeah. somebody, a military guy, that he's coming back from Afghanistan or Vietnam, that he, they have a disorder, it's amorphous, you can't see it on a blood test, you can't see it on a brain, blood, blood, uh, a brain scan. <laughs> right. they, the way they internalize it, soldiers, because I spend a lot of time with them, is I'm crazy. Right. It is, it is an amorphous thing that we can't put our heads around. When you have a physical injury, it's in a physical place. We know what's causing it. Uh, yeah, but it's like in the fucking your neck here. Like, like you're wrong, probably. Stigma away. So yeah. I agree with you that a disorder shouldn't be crazy making. If Correct. we see somebody with a broken leg, we don't go, well, we don't think they're crazy. We just, if we have to help them walk, we just say, oh, they have a broken leg. But this thing, it's an injury. That's why the book is called The Invisible Machine, because you can't see it. It's a broken leg you can't see. If you can right. see it, people would be more empathetic. So I agree with you that a disorder should not be uh, someone's 
crazy, but I would but I would argue that in the in the way that we process this within the pathos of a collective society is that if you got a disorder, sadly, we stigmatize that as a person that has a no. It's crazy, and that's wrong. But it's no. It's just hard for your grift. What? Yeah. But it's also not really true. I I believe, and maybe I'm wrong. I'm not, but I could be. <laughs> uh, that. 99% of this stuff, if you're walking around not feeling good about yourself, having an issue, uh, you have a combination of an, of an overactive sympathetic and an unhealthy brain. Yeah. Uh, so we're talking about brain health and nervous system The health, fuck? And that's really what's going on. So let's just call it what it is. Yeah. Okay? Rather than destigmatize the, um, those who are living with a disorder, what we need to do is tell them, ah, we're going to call it an injury. Also, um, I'm going to charge you $5,000 for a shot. Uh, Jill Anderson says you can train the amygdala. It takes patience and a rolled newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, Tom and Sonny's have illegal tints or Ruby. Uh, having the injections was the best decision I've ever made forever in Jamie's debt for sharing the information. Well, one thing I'll say is. Uh, thank you for your patronage. <sighs> Listen, you know, when you survive something like a lot, I have a lot of friends that aren't around and I, I had a lot of survivor's guilt and, you know, you have to make an existential choice. And the choice I made is maybe I could understand what this would mean. And I would my job was to kind of try to push this towards more of the mainstream, less fringe drama because I could see it more clearly because of what I came out on the other side of, you know, mm-hmm. Fuck I, you. being illiterate till I was 19, I ended up getting a college degree. It was pretty hard. It almost killed me. Uh, but I have a degree from a pretty rarefied school in Europe. So uh, that was really, really, really hard. Like just dealing with my literacy as a 20 year old man almost killed me. I I, I mean, like I it made my organs bleed <laughs> like the, yeah. the psychological yeah. torture of dealing with literacy at 20. Um, and then I ended up getting a degree from a fancy school. I overshot. I was trying to fix my literacy and I overshot. Um, <laughs> But uh, I feel why are you apostrophe R E? You know, like I was wronged, and I feel really unlucky, and then I also feel really, really lucky. Yeah. Um, and you know, so it's a, it's weird. Uh, but but I you're will- sharing your luck and your blessings and your knowledge, Jeremy, and that's uh, Jamie. That's the difference. No, that, no. You know, no. You are no, he's not. To the world in the form of your books, in the form of all of the things that you do to create positive impacts everywhere. I know it's very hard for you to take compliments, but these are just facts. People no, are, are grateful. Oh, wait, no, 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 what do you mean these are just facts? You, and you've done no, no, great stuff. I like the, I like the, I like <laughs> the compliments. I, I like, I'm not altruistic, but I do like the compliments. I appreciate the compliments. Yeah. Um, There's more coming. Then, Hang on. Oh, good, good. No, okay. Bring them. Yeah. Bring them. Mischief Manage them. says, uh, just started your book today, Jamie. Now this. I hope now, you pirated it. Real question, but I, I marked it anyway. Kristen in Copenhagen wants to know, can Any predictions from people who uh, aren't Miss J? <laughs> oh, Lady B. I'd like to uh, irate lump. Ducky. <laughs> Think they could sell this $5,000 shot to a dog? Well, it wouldn't be the dog paying the bill, right? It would be the, the person who got the shot themselves and thought maybe they should get it for their dog. <laughs> you get a dollar off for the dog. Oh, hell no. And the treatment work for a dog. It's Has, funny. Uh, they did, He did it on a dog. Okay. Well, oh, the answer is yes. It may be. There you go. Yeah. I don't know that there's people out there doing it on dogs, but he did it on a dog. Okay. A dog, and the dog did better, but then something else happened to the dog. The dog. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, something else happened to the dog. The dog died, but it had nothing to do with the fucking shot that we gave him. My God. Fuck this dude. <laughs> did it on a dog okay a dog, and the dog did better but then something else happened to the dog the dog the right dog that's me. it was dogs, not a lucky dog yeah dogs have all kinds of stuff i mean yeah, i have two yeah, dogs yeah, and they're sympathetic, bougie and, 
yeah. the sympathetic is <laughs> the ultrasound and a, and a skilled practitioner. And- no, fuck this dude is a uh, fuck this dude already clipped, but there, I don't know if there's a clip in there. Y'all can, y'all can grab it. Send it to there me. There you go. Um, Bambina Vivace wants to know a friend was telling me about procaine infusion therapy that would be as effective as DSR but less hazardous do you know about it and what's your thoughts I don't know anything about procaine infusion therapy I'm going to look into it I wrote it down I don't okay. agree that this is hazardous this thing's been around oh, since no, 1925 I, and see, I, that's, that was the question I was going to ask <laughs> this has been around for almost 100 years this procedure and the knowledge yeah, of, for, of yeah, I mean, it's been evolved they've made it better right, right. left side because now we have two. ultrasounds <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. but you know but this is different like an ultrasound is non-invasive what the fuck is he talking about um, in terms of uh, safety of medical procedures this is one of the safest medical procedures you could do there you go. No, injecting something into your spine is never safe. I mean, that's it, not unsafe. Oh, no, 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 not true. It's safer than going to the dentist, you know. So this idea that it's it's not, uh, it's, you know, it's not hazardous. It's a little bit yeah. invasive. It's an injection, you know. But yeah. uh, I mean, there, it, it, like and I'll just bring up this next one. Pamela was asking, am I considering uh, or getting the DSR treatment? I did get it. And I will say this. I, uh, you know, y- you do get like numbed prior to the injection and then the injection and it's it's uh, so listen, wait so this is just an anesthesiologist oh fuck yeah, and it's, like, yeah. it's you know it's an injection it does yeah. take some time you have to you know get the medicine in there and and, and get the thing going in those two spots but what you know, and then you recover in the recovery room i had a beautiful uh very cushy i, I want that chair in my house it's so okay. comfortable and again I mean, if you're charging five thousand dollars for a shot, you know, listen, and then you go home, and I just slept. And you know? listen, let me let me say this: I did it on myself, right? It was like Vanilla Sky, like going to downtown Chicago. Well, in the clarification: of Jamie did not inject himself. No, 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 but I went and got it. <laughs> and I will, you know. And again, like I believe in therapies. I believe that there's ketamine, hyperbaric. I do believe that there's ketamine. <laughs> I myself have done ketamine. We called it Special K at the time. Brain mm-hmm. There's so many amazing psilocybin. Uh, there's so many incredible things. We know more about the brain in the last 10 years, 20 years, than we know about the, in the previous 20,000. Correct. Right. So all, I'm all for, there's so many great Ooh, things. Are you talking too I'm quick to be at the bottom of a K-hole? Uh, and I'm allowed to have, I'm not, you know, I'm allowed to have my opinion. You are. It's America. And my opinion is in terms of what this can do for a human being, in terms of how long it takes and how mm-hmm. much one gets out of it, yeah. I don't think there's anything else in the world that comes close to what this can do for a person. Yeah. Line them up. And the other thing I would say is this: you know, you can go and I meet. So I've met so many yoga instructors that became yoga, yoga instructors because they're just trying to regulate their nervous system every day. Wait, right? what? No, they're just stretching mostly. Being around horses, or they're doing these things, and it works. Been around horses. <laughs> uh, is this good for a horse? All these incredible things, running, these endorphins, this regulates the nervous system. The problem is 24 hours later, it's back. When you do the DSR, you just do yoga because you love it. You and when you do this DSR, it might be uh, six weeks until you come back and give us another five grand. Because you love it. You go into nature because it makes you present and you love it. So you're not kind of constantly getting this yo-yo effect. And so that's, yeah. I just, I, I, I believe that um, all the, there's a lot of therapies that are talked about in the Invisible Machine beyond uh the sgb dsr all right so please once again okay. get the okay. book the links in the chat Fuck your book. Um, purple groovy says you're changing lives jamie okay uh honeybee me this injection sounds amazing my two concerns uh i'm afraid of needles and it will be a few years to save the money it'd be let's start this one again my two concerns, uh, I'm afraid of needles, and it will be a few years to save the money. It'd be great to one day use money for my abusers for this injection. Let me say this. Uh, I, and I'll just, you know, this is me disclosing my own personal information. Uh, in order to be relaxed for it, because it, it, it doesn't have an interaction with this, I did take my own personal anti-anxiety med um, to just chill out and be as relaxed as humanly possible while getting injected twice on one side of my neck because that's not something that you just normally do it's not like shaving your armpits or something you know so you do want to go into it 
eyes wide open and as relaxed as humanly possible. That worked for me, whatever. So for a normal medical procedure, <clears throat> uh, they take care of everything she's talking about here. Whatever works for you in that case, you should do. Um, I'm not a doctor. I'm not prescribing people anti-anxiety meds. But um, if you can get the money for it, there are places. It varies cost-wise, location to location, because it's, you know, the provider. Oh, yeah, I, mean, I believe, but, listen, if, we, if you listen to the operator syndrome symptoms. and sim He was like, whoa, whoa, don't get this anywhere other than the place that I'm talking about. I gave anxiety, paranoia, mild sense of doom, lack mm -hmm. of sleep, hypervigilance, hyperarousal. All things you'd be feeling running from a tiger. This accounts for about vigilance, hyperarousal. All things you'd be feeling running from a tiger. Fucking tigers again. Tigers, everybody. Tigers. This accounts for about 80 to 90% of the things that people are using to, to deal with their nervous system. Okay, mm -hmm. whether it be psychotropics, bourbon, cannabis. Mm -hmm. I believe that this thing is at the root of it. It's the autonomic nervous system. They've had they've had wondrous strides treating long COVID and autonomic nerve autonomic. Oh, it treats. Uh, oh, you could imagine it treats long COVID. I wonder if he also like doesn't believe in COVID diseases with it on uh, nervous system diseases with it. Mm -hmm. So I believe it is a very, very fundamental root uh, thing, kind of like I, I would compare it to the discovery of penicillin. People just don't understand it because you can't see it. People understood penicillin, actually. Uh, people understood uh, penicillin. It was a it killed bacterial infections. People totally like even if you aren't a fucking bacterial infection expert, uh, people people kind of people kind of grokked what penicillin did. Actually, I think in terms of save lives, it could save more lives than the polio vaccine. You know, the, the polio vaccine saved. Wait, what? This motherfucker. Penicillin. People just don't understand it because you can't see it. I think in terms of save lives, it could save more lives than the polio vaccine. Ooh, I don't know about that. I'm thinking no. You know, the, the polio vaccine saved, you know, 50,000 American lives a year, maybe. Mm -hmm. The amount of people that would not unalive themselves if they did the DSR is far more than that. I'm sorry. Right. Oh, 100%. No, the human misery, you know, again, I'm not trying to poop on anything. I'm just trying to say, like, it is my belief. Or a part of his downline. As, a, as an American, as a human being, with what I've seen, uh, that this is what it is and does. The scientists wouldn't say what I say. They would go far. They wouldn't go as far as me because they're, you know, they have to be more careful. I'm yeah. an artist I, I, and a writer. I, 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 um, where's your art? I can say whatever I want. There's a lot of data right. in the book. I respect data science. I have a degree uh, after being illiterate. I have a degree from the London School of Economics where I immerse, where I learned and to fall in love with data. And, and, and because I had so many weird beliefs for most of my, li my life and, and my childhood, I now live in a world where all I care about is data. I want to see the research. I want to see the data science. Right. And the data science is going to lead to my conclusions. Ooh. All right. Uh, uh, and then if I see new information that tells me that's wrong, then I'm going to change my mind. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But I'm not. I'm not. I, I don't believe I'm wrong about this. Yeah. Okay? No, no, no. And again, yeah. And again, no, yeah. you know, again, like I, you know, the, you know, I'm not interested in being the shot guy. Right. I'm not no, interested in being. Jamie, this is just, again, this is one facet of Jamie mustard and it's okay. the current facet. Well, what are the other facets right now <laughs> that people are well, looking at? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and you know. where's his art? I had no interest in being like, I, I, I'm a DJ, but you could, find evidence that i'm a dj i've can we find this guy's art pied piper of some sort of trauma recovery whatever right i'm sharing the information uh if it makes sense to you reach out i'll get you peer-reviewed journals whatever you need uh, you give me peer-reviewed journals whatever i need
Actually, I looked for peer reviewed. Um, I looked for peer reviewed stuff about this. I found a place where there was a comment. We were at like Journal of the American Medical Association. We found a thing about this. Uh, we found a comment. Uh, the comment wasn't great, actually. Well, no, the comment was good. It seemed like a concerned, uh, a concerned person in the the relevant field. I don't mean the comment wasn't great. I mean, like we found a place where there was something about this, where there was a comment, like on the on the post, and the comment brought up some significant concerns. Where are the peer reviewed journals? And also, like, for the normal person, for, like, a regular person who is suffering from post-traumatic stress, he can send you a peer-reviewed what? Uh, and if you think it's uh, bullshit, then cool. We're cool. Yeah. I'll still be your friend. <laughs> I don't want to be your friend. I already have a friend. My friend Juan Maserati is, like, your doppelganger, and he's way cooler than you are. Yeah. A Angie yeah. Mo loves like I could call Juan right now and wake him up and be like could you bring me some weed he'd be like fuck man you woke me up I gotta work at 7 in the morning I'd be like but Juan I really need some weed and he'd be like alright homie just this once facial hair looking so distinguished oh thank you <laughs> uh, the aftermath show doesn't negate what they are doing though today uh, it's that part that is disappointing and frustrating it's sad I agree and but I don't know what ANC is talking about. Fat Grammy says, what I see, uh, your past doesn't define you. It shows huge resilience. That's what but I think his past is bullshit. I think there's not all of it, but a non-insignificant part of this guy's origin story is bullshit, I think. But she sees in you. Uh, yeah, I just have a lot of art coming out in the next few years. And I'm, and yeah. I, and I'm like... Oh, I'm, but don't you have art that we could look at now? Kind of like... Do I don't want people to look at that art and go, oh yeah, it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the Captain Stubing sci-fi guy <laughs> art. You know, that's that's like my nightmare. But I, you know, I realize that it may a lot of it may be in my head. And uh, but you know, so there are a couple things. We're getting to the end of this. One, I would obliterate this guy if we had a conversation. But two. I feel like I'm starting to think we should send the media wench to talk to this guy. If we have any chance of talking to this guy, maybe I'm not the one. Maybe it's not me. I mean, I'm all right. I like me. But I'm thinking, because he said he talked to anybody. I'm thinking maybe he needs to meet Ashley. And there's a non-zero chance that just for, for funsies, we should send Juan to talk to this guy armed with like a Google Doc. You know, that's, it's going to be all that would be weird be right. and fun. Caroline okay. in Canada wants to know. Um, Hi, Nora. Hi, Jamie. I've been off work on long term disability due to work related harassment and abuse. I'm now having nightmares. You both give info and joy to me. Great. Are you having nightmares? Give us $5,000 and we'll inject some shit into your spine and your nightmares will go away. Well, you're very welcome. And I hope, uh, you know, you ha can get a good recovery going there, Caroline. Absolutely. Anna from Canada uh, says, I find I found you incredibly brave, Jamie, when you told me. I'm sorry, Nick. Thank you, Miss J. Thank you, Miss J. That's, I would call myself Anna Canada. 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 Whatever takes courage to be vulnerable and i believe you have helped many yeah i hope so because sometimes i feel like um i don't want to go overboard and just kind of like for lack of a better term just like prostituting out my story i sometimes feel like oh so, i don't like the word prostitute canana hold on <laughs> hold on it's like it's like this right it's like Anomalous. Anomalous. You know, I don't want that to be what I'm doing. Yeah, you know, but I, but I, but I, but I, hold on. Fuck this dude. I feel like I have to do it. I have to say what happened to be, or to create a context of why I get, why I care. 
about yeah, it. Right? 100%. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Amber Vanas says, I really don't know how all our parents got away with what they got away with. Uh, my parents are cool as fuck, and they didn't have to get away with shit, actually. But I'm fortunate. <clears throat> Although I will say that my mother is becoming a little, little interested in what I'm doing in a very uncomfortable way. And by that I mean, I think she... Yeah, I think she's becoming interested in what I'm doing in an uncomfortable way. And you may remember Amber from the pack days. Amber, reach out to me on Insta, please. Yeah. Uh, Tennessee Jack. Like, you don't have an email address or a website like a fucking normal grifter? Like, doesn't a regular grifter have like an email address? What do you mean DM me on Instagram? He says, I think something like post apartheid South Africa's truth and reconciliation with all involved would be helpful healing for all involved. Oh, yeah. so good. I mean, if you read the Australian prime ministers, I don't know. What the fuck? What the fuck? I'm sorry. Uh, what the fuck? I don't know if it's 10, 20 years ago. Uh, apology to the uh, Aboriginal people. Uh, and one of the main things that he was apologizing for was the separating of, of children from parents, mixed, mixed kids from parents. Uh, it's incredible. I'm sorry, what the fuck? incredibly powerful and incredibly healing and and that's part of also what i'm trying to do if the if the if the, if the first gens if you want to call them that uh won't do it uh won't say hey sorry guys then as one of you um i'm gonna say hey sorry guys sorry yeah. guys I'm sorry, sorry what it happened to you i'm sorry it happened to me what uh yeah uh there you go Huh? Amber, again, uh, there was always a lice outbreak. We would check each other. I got really good at recognizing what lice looks like, which is a sad truth amongst the kids, guys. That's just another sad truth. Kate Delight says, comment, bought a second copy of The Invisible Sheen for my doctor. Maybe he can educate himself on CPTSI because they don't believe in this here. Thank you, Jamie. Shout out to this lady's doctor. Kate D. Light, shout out to your doctor who was like, what are you talking about? I've had so many therapists say to me that it explains what, you know, the work with someone for five years and mm -hmm. there's something that's like stopping it. They can't figure out what it is. Right. And they feel like this explains it. I've had so many people that have gotten therapy that say that they go and they get the shots and then 10 years of therapy, therapy either kicks in or they make more progress in the 10 months. But this is the fuck, fuck that. They've had 10 years of therapy. They buy this book, they read this book or whatever, and now they think the therapy helped them. What if the therapy helped them? Ah, oh, what if you're, oh, there's so much fucking wrong with this. Yeah, buy two. Give one to your doctor. Or after the, 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 um, the sympathetic reset or retune, than they do, than they have in the previous 10 years. So yeah. I'm not, again, I sound like I'm selling cheeseburgers, okay? <laughs> but no, no uh, I don't know if you buy a cheeseburger, like, I don't know, you, it's not good for you, but it's only, like, even a, a really good cheeseburger is only 20 bucks. And, like, to be fair, like, there are places where you might pay nineteen ninety nine for a cheeseburger, and you're like, you know what? Maybe it wasn't quite worth 20 bucks, but that cheeseburger was fucking delicious. But I'm really not. not. You've been somewhere and bought an overpriced burger, and you're like, God, I wish I didn't spend that much money on that burger, but it was pretty good. You're I'm not. really not. Like, no. if you don't want to do it, don't do it. Um, and I you said that you, to me many times. Yeah, if you're you were like, listen, trauma, if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. It was I like a condition of our friendship. Trauma, <laughs> yeah, if you're dealing with trauma and you this stuff resonates with you and you look into it, I think you'll want to do it. Yeah. You know, the no, hardest people I have, the people that I have the hardest time with are my friends because they know me and it's like, <laughs> Oh yeah, we're going to go do the Jamie thing. It's like, that's where it, it's, it's actually way easier with people that don't know me because, but uh, oh, again, that's interesting.
So he said he would talk to anyone. I think we're going to try to talk to him. I don't know how this is going to go. Um, if I had to guess, if we were to reach out, I wouldn't do it myself, by the way. Oh, well, we would have the media went to reach out to this guy. Ashley's pretty good at that stuff. However, if we were to reach out to him to try to talk to him, I have some predictions about how it would go. If he's smart enough to do a little bit of checking, he would respond saying that we are not good faith actors. I think that's how this would go. We are going to reach out to Jamie Mustard. You believe he come on the show? I think he won't come on the show. I'm not saying he won't talk to me. So he, I think, okay, first of all, maybe this guy, if this guy's stupid, he'll come talk to me. Which would be great. No moderator, whatever. If he's a little, a little more savvy than we think he is, he'll probably demand that we do it on Nora's show. But this, the, the negotiation on that would all be up to the media wench. This is where, like, I don't think people understand that the, Ashley is so good at this stuff. Well, it's a little weird, a little weird that he wants to communicate via Instagram. Don't forget to follow us on social media for beautiful food and inspiration. I would love to talk to him. Uh, I actually don't want to be here. You know, uh, oh, me neither. I would rather be masturbating, shucking shot cheeseburgers. Okay. <laughs> and I don't love people like referring to me as the shot. You know, it's just like the, it's the only people referring to you as that, Jamie, are people who are trying to negate and and make fun of. It's okay. No. Oh, I am trying to make fun of him. Correct. But what I'm saying is there's nobody here who has lived through trauma, who is now got an actual solution in their life. Okay. Right. But this is a problem. This is like a self-selecting group of people who were inclined to believe in the therapy, got the therapy and then said it worked. This is like a powerful pipeline for fucking snake oil. If you think the fucking snake oil is going to work, then you do the snake oil and you're like, oh shit, the snake oil worked. And looking for a solution in their life who is like oh i'm gonna call up i'm gonna find the shot guy on instagram like they're like <laughs> this is going to be amazing the people who are saying things like that but if you go into like some kind of treatment like you're already primed to believe that it's going to work what a fucking nightmare are the same people know, who say fine. trauma not, drama, yeah. which is a fucking bullshit thing. It's not. So I think we should send him to Justin first. I'm going to be straight up. Justin freaking. Oh, we should send this guy to Justin first. <laughs> we should send this guy to like, and I, I love Justin. He's a smart and a very kind person, but we should send this guy to Justin first because Justin would just. Be very rude to this person from the jump. Something any therapist who's licensed I would say to help people would say. That yeah. that, anybody that use that term is a nefarious term. Yeah, no, it absolutely but, but, is. And so is gonna, the shot guy. It's trying to lessen your expertise. <laughs> and he, what's he an expert in, Nora? Lessen, right. And lessen what is actually going on here, which is the, pro, the, the hope and the promise of being able to She's literally describing the mechanism of snake oil. Check this out. And the lesson, shot. right. The and shot. lesson, what is actually going on here, which is the pro the, the hope and the promise of being able to I mean, you can do that start with over. Yeah. Like yeah, this is the promise of what he's telling you. She's describing snake oil. The hope and the promise that you can get better via some shit actually.
No, curious. The curious. That's why I want him to go on Justin's show. Justin's not great with it. Justin would just talk. Justin would talk shit to this guy till he hung up, and that would be amazing. No, that would be amazing. And then he'd come 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 talk to us, and he would find that refreshing. But he would get completely dismantled by the likes of us, and he wouldn't even know it was happening because he was he didn't have his shots after he talked to Justin. Like this yeah, is what we, we all want from therapy. Yeah, we want the that. ability to start over. You can do that with anything. It's right. like, oh, look at Nora with her plush shawls behind her. She's the plush girl. Ooh. Oh, look at that therapist <laughs> over there with the therapy. Oh, no, Mr. Oh, Bill. The talker, the talk therapy person. Yeah. Oh, I'm the talk therapy guy. Yeah. Like you can do that. Oh, I'm a talk therapy guy. Oh, I'm the talk that. What the fuck is he talking about? It's, yeah. It's being done to me. Uh, it's, it's it's amusing. That'd be very funny. But I mean, curious. That'd be very funny, right? I don't know if you were, do you remember what Justin did to that fucking maskless Moses guy? I forget the guy's name. <laughs> do you remember? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's, it's stupid. Sad. It's don't worry. You're sad. not the shot guy. Are, are we wrapping this up? Soon? I'm trying to, like, okay. Yeah. Stop responding for 10 minutes to every comment. Okay. One second. Okay. I'm just kidding. Jamie. Three's I downstairs. Okay. In front of my so house. it says, I'm with you, Nora. So many avenues that sane and capable adults could have taken to prevent, mitigate uh, the suffering of children. T yeah, that's just pilled. It's permanent. In many cases, they can be permanent. You have to retrauma. Everyone's different. Sometimes you have to go. Uh, in many, oh, in many cases, uh oh. Or redo it, but a year or two later. But I mean, listen, if you amortize it over the price of your life, uh, or what you pay spend on bourbon or cannabis. Or, or psychotropics, it's pennies. Okay. There you go. So, okay. What? Are the shots available in Canada? Uh, no. I don't know. Uh, send me a message on it. I've been getting. <laughs> uh, are the shots available in Canada? I don't know. Uh, send me a message on it. Uh, no, actually. I've been getting some emails lately and I need to do some research. Oh, do, can we find a link to the thing that Justin did to the fucking maskless Moses guy? How do we find a link to that? Right. What was that guy's name? Benjamin Martin? Was that his name? How do we find a link to that? Is that on Justin shit? Because that was very funny. I'm going to look into it. Fantastic. Because I'm, I'm like done with like doing anything serious tonight, but I will go down the rabbit hole. Thank you for being here all the way uh, from Norway. Uh, what is the name of the treatment? It is called the stelet ganglion block, which is kind of a misnomer because typically with nerve block. So hold on for being here all the way uh, from Norway. Uh, what is the name of the treatment? It is called the stelet ganglion block, which is kind of a misnomer because typically with nerve blocks, we think about something that deadens nerves for prolonged time. What? This is a local anesthetic. Bufivacaine or- Couldn't you just say, oh, it's called this. Pivacaine, Nopi, uh, which is like what would they use for an epidural because it wears off so fast. Mm -hmm. It's literally the same drug they use in an epidural, actually. So they just basically turn off the nervous system for about five minutes. When it comes back on five minutes later, the new we believe the nerve growth refactor is received. You have to be kidding me. What would they use for an epidural because it wears off so fast? Mm -hmm. So they just basically turn off the nervous system for about five minutes. When it comes back on five minutes later. I'm not sure you could survive your nervous system being turned off for five minutes. I'm not a nervous system expert, but it seems like five minutes is a very long time for your nervous system uh, to be turned off. The new, we believe the nerve growth refactor is receding. The norepinephrine. <laughs> it's like a hard reset. It's like, it's like when you press and hold the power button on your fucking computer. And, it, and, the, and the person comes back. <laughs> and the and the, the it's like what I had to do earlier when my audio failed during the podcast. Were you here? nerves that cause you to be high. Yeah, two hours actually curiouser curiouser and curiouser like so you're charging five grand for this for uh five minutes how much for two hours because the nerve growth factor turns off uh there's a fee <laughs> uh back loop. you're like i could take out a loan sympathetic and the amygdala that's what we believe is going on there you go, guys. All right. Yeah, turn it off and turn it back on our again. Comments question section for this evening. Okay. Jamie, right. thank you so much for being so here. So he did say he would talk to anybody, right?